Hello. Hello. Hey everybody, happy Monday. Happy Bank Holiday Monday. And you join us here for part four of our IFR ATC series tonight. Well, we have a demonstration to show you. It's going to be operating in a shared cockpit environment. And, uh, and then we're going to be going over some revision as well, right? So at this stage, some people are already starting to transition over to VATSIM. I've, uh, I've heard a few voices online over my flying over the weekend. And uh, well, a few more of you are probably just thinking, yeah, nearly there. We just need a bit more kind of fine tuning. Uh, and that's the plan for tonight. It's the fine tuning. Some of the revision of uh, a lot of the stuff we've already covered. But hopefully there's a bit in it that we'll all go, oh yeah. Do you know? So, hope you're all keeping very well. How did your bank holiday weekend go? Was it great? <laughs> it's over. What? Oh, three day weekends. And some people had a four day weekend. But sure, listen, we're all in it now together. And uh, as far as I know, everything everything should be working all right. I hope. Let's see what happens. But uh, we'll get into the planation for tonight. So we know exactly what to expect. So in our fourth lesson, we're going to give you a demonstration of a full IFR flight with ATC on the VATSIM network. It's in a shared cockpit environment. Flying from Dublin to Shannon, pilot flying is going to handle the aircraft and the pilot not flying is going to handle all of the radios. Being able to use the shared cockpit environment, meaning that two people are essentially controlling the same aircraft, but it can be very helpful when training not just for ATC, but also some general piloting skills and navigation. We also take time to review our training so far, taking a closer look at some of the hints, tips and options for a better online ATC experience. The key aspects of the revision, but well, we're going to focus on flight planning, specific to VATSIM. We're also going to be talking about airport and airmanship etiquette. When, where to spawn on the ground, your ground movements, the use of your aircraft lights, your taxiway limits, holding short, all that jazz. We're also going to focus on the voice procedure. Following the flow of communications, knowing when to speak and who to speak with. And then we adapt to change, planning for alternatives when things don't go exactly according to plan. We have conditional clearances. How do we deal with changes from ATC in a live environment? Then after our lesson from last week, we're going to delve into a bit of aircraft separation. Plan to manage our distance to and from other aircraft, specifically when we're on VATSIM uh, on Unicom, but also for ground control, taxiing in and around the airport as well. What we could do as pilots that can greatly assist the ground controllers or any ATC controller that are going to staff up the frequencies for us, right? So there's quite a bit to get through, lads. Quite a bit to get through. So uh, I've updated the new course manual. It's now version 7.4. It's available for us over on the Two-Tone Murphy website. And we're going to go through that in some detail here now in a moment. And uh, I've also tapped into a lot of the VATSIM Learning Center stuff. There's an absolute wealth of information in there that we're going to be checking out and just kind of refining our skills of what it is we're doing. And then as a side note, well, in, in VATSIM or on VATSIM, well, tonight, well, there is ATC up and running uh, for Dublin and Shannon. I think approach are on for both areas. We need to get through our stuff first. Uh, but of course, if anyone's going to be jumping over there, uh, feel free to belt away. So, uh, well, who's here? Look, does this, it's kind of busy, do you know, on a Monday. And I, I see comments about the time as well. Um, yeah, Zulu time, daylight saving or something. That's what they call it. But yes, uh, we're effectively an hour in the future, technically. Uh, but then again, I don't know what did they start first. If anyone knows the answer to that, there's a prize in there somewhere. Like, when they originally did it, did they start with putting the clocks forward or backwards? I'll leave that one with you for a while. Do you know, if whoever has the answer now, you know, there's a prize in it. Um, don't Google it. You need to know these things, right? But uh, yeah, so uh, 1900 Zulu is the uh, get-go from here on in until, when is it? October? And then we fall back. We spring forward in spring and then we fall back in autumn. That's usually what happens. But anyway, who's here? Look, Englewood Online. Welcome aboard. Happy Monday to you. Rambog Mord is in the chat. Welcome in, my dude. For our controllers, relatively handy night tonight. Although business will pick up quite a bit next week. And uh, the flight that you're going to see on, um, on the shared cockpit environment, well, it's operating out of an airport we haven't covered yet on our course. It's operating out of Dublin. And uh, well, there's a couple of conditional conditions when it comes to Dublin and uh, well we'll be talking about those now here in a bit as well uh Viper Strike is here it's good to see you Super Typhon rambles in uh the R22 yes yes we'll have to check it out man Gibbo Ireland is here Asher how are you he says happy Monday oh uh, I want another four days off it can't be over already right 
where did the time go? It was going grand until, you know, now it wasn't, you know. Uh, but yes, now where we're at, over here. Uh, Shuffle Shoes, Shuffle's in, H.I.H. John, great to see you. Red Dragon is in the house. I saw you flying earlier on. Great to see you, man. Martell is here. Welcome aboard. Now, let me see. Uh, buttons over here. Epic Fool is in the house. Asher, how are you? This will not go to plan. I'm calling it now. Come here, did you get the R22? Is it good? Devil Dude has subscribed 27 months. Thank you very, very much indeed. He says, who is this streamer? What is a Skoda? What is this for? Oh, wait. What is this for a simulator game? <laughs> Come here. You know the whole April Fool's things. Now, is there anyone looking at all the April Fool's going, oh, for God's sake. You know, or are there some going, ho, 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 laughing like a musketeer? I don't really get it. Like, it's it's grand and all, you know, tomfoolery and, yeah, I've said something factually incorrect and others find it funny kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Some stuff you do get a bit of a giggle out of, other stuff you're just like, oh, really? And then you have others who actually say it's an April Fool's when technically it is, but it isn't. Just any bills brought out an F1 card. Did you see that? But for licensing purposes, of course, it's it can't be called an F1 car. It's hilarious, do you know? So, uh, that, that's what they get up to. I'm not here to judge. I'm just thinking it's, you know, chase plane and whatnot, <laughs> right? Talk about throwing a cat amongst other cats and then going after the pigeons. But anyway, we'll ramble on. Flying Teapot is here. It's good to see you. Spitfire RAF 100 is in the chat. Welcome in. Black Eyes Gabe is here. We have a Black Eyes Gabe. He says, happy Monday, everyone. And those who drive Teslas... This is your video. Myself and Gibbo living it up in the real world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they. Next time we're doing that, Gibbo, I'm going to wear a baseball cap backwards just because I reckon I'm at that stage now. You know, we kind of broke the ice a bit. And it'll be all recorded from inside the Skoda. Sure, we'll have loads of room. I'll have to shout across to you. Yeah, right over there, Gibbo. Yeah, I'm Grand Morph. Uh, right. Huge car, massive. And, you know, incredibly superior in every single way, including its name. Superb. Balls. I meant to say superb. Balls. It's a Skoda Superb, not a Skoda Superior. I've already messed up. Shh, shh. It's fine. I'll distract myself with um, distractions. Uh, stick figure. Good to see you. Thank God someone pressed a button. Uh, Redman Tech is here. Welcome aboard, man. Uh, old veteran 965. Happy April Fools. Indeed. What's the history of April Fools? Look in the mirror, Murphy. Wait, what? Uh? Right? Do you know, Dougal McTavish, the chairman, has rambled in. He says, hey ho, evening guys. What could possibly go wrong here? Dougal, you're going to be famous. When you hear it. Uh, now, where are we at? We're over here, look. Uh, Jesus, there's, it's God almighty. Uh, Zybok Doc calling from Denmark. Hello from Tipperary. I hope you're well, man. Filthy jumps in the door, subscribing for 22 months. No, 24 months. 24 months. Thank you very, very much indeed. Insane support. David Bay is here. He says, evening all. Are we flying at all tonight or watching? Uh, you, oh, Jesus, where's my screen gone? It's down here. I found it. Oh, no, wait, it's not. It's up here. Are we flying tonight or just watching? Just so I know to get things set up. The focus tonight is on... <laughs> I can't get a word in, Andres. Eh, There's just stuff happening. Um, the focus tonight is revision and it's a demonstration of a flight. It's basically what I want to be able to show you guys is the advantages of shared cockpit and the reason why i'm saying this most of what we do online it tends to be a very kind of a solo act right on your own now i know you have atc there and all of that however when you combine something like a shared cockpit it changes the game completely and not necessarily just for atc you can share the controls of the aircraft Think of the applications here. I mean, if you if you wanted to learn an aircraft, if you wanted to learn procedures, if you wanted to do, you know, navigation, well, it's all there by combining you both into the one environment. It's not perfect. It's not like 100% works perfect every time, but it's pretty close. You know, it's pretty close. So that is the focus tonight, and we see how we get on then after that. But everything that we're covering tonight, I can't stress it enough, it's extremely important because these are kind of the fine-tuning we're at now, which is amazing considering we're on our fourth lesson and we're now starting to fine tune like that. And it's incredible. Like the, the, the progress that you guys are making, like it's completely knocked me for six. And I mean that genuinely, you know, I was expecting, right. And on lesson 10, it's how to fire up an APU, <laughs> right? Do you know? So like you're, you're progressing fast, which is great. And what we're showing tonight, we're introducing a new airport. We're introducing new software. And of course, you're going to see 
what the flight actually looks like on Vatsim. Do you know what I mean? So there's, there's quite a bit to cover. Uh, but anyway, Hemingbird is here. She goes, I met a girl today who only eats plants. I tell you her name, but you won't have heard it. It wouldn't... Oh, hang on, I made a buzz of that one. I tell you her name, but you won't have heard of her before. Herbivore. Herbivore? <laughs> I'll read that so I don't sound like a total idiot and I can edit this bit out. You ready now? <clears throat> Hemingbird is here and she says, I met a girl today who only eats plants. I tell you her name, but you won't have heard of her before. <laughs> I still nearly messed it up. Hemingbird, it's good to see you. Welcome in. Now, where are we at? Uh, Old Venomous says, uh, Gibbo and we are flying together in the same cockpit. What could possibly go wrong, right? They let us fly. Muse Van is here. He bursts in the door saying, Happy Monday, yes, mad jokes, yes. And a grand old stretch in the evening time, so there is Muse, isn't there? Isn't it brilliant? Uh, Soaring AJ, you're very welcome aboard. Good to see you, man. Uh, Captain Arash is here. 34 months. Captain Arash, great to see you. Arash, I keep asking and I keep forgetting because I know you're telling me, but are you going to Vegas? Can you make it? Can you make it down to Vegas this year? Uh, larger life, it's good to see you. Uh, Epic Phil says, shared cockpit with Murph means there's always someone else to blame. Exactly. Even if it's not the other pilot, this means we can blame the software. Epic, we, do you know what I mean? We drank out of the same bottle, do you know? Cyrus T is in the house. Welcome aboard, Cyrus, and thank you very much indeed. A brand new livery for the Ageway Comanche is available on our website as well in the Platinum series of our Firefly Air uh, liveries. Very, very tasty, very, very nice. Uh, and thank you very much for all your work on that one. Uh, Shirley Dev, good to see you. Now, where are we at? Uh, Gibbo and Murph sharing a cockpit. What could possibly go wrong? That's kind of the theme for tonight, isn't it? <sighs> it was great for me, says Gibbo. Uh, I've already made excuses. It was all Murph's fault. <laughs> it was Murph's fault. Listen, it'll be grand, right? Uh, Gibbo and Murph plane spotting video was a trial run for shared cockpit. Bit of crack that, wasn't it? Are we good out? The weather the weekend was shocking. So we 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 headed out to um, we were out in Dublin Airport over the week. Uh, on what day was that? Saturday. And uh, we uh, I nearly abandoned ship. I nearly lost the Skoda. In Ireland, we have potholes similar to that of, like, cave diving potholes. I mean, that's a pothole, right? Forget the small little, you know. Anyway, I went into... I pulled in so Gibbo could drive up beside me and, you know, converse in a, whatever, a bit of slagging. And I went into this thing and, you know, you hit a big pothole when the car goes to one side and you hear this sound going, Mother of Jesus! And it was you! How <laughs> much Right, uh, very bad. But it, it's fine. You see, the Skoda can take that sort of punishment. It laughs it off. Water off a duck's back. Although I've never seen water off a duck's back. I've never talked to it. You know, did you ever inspect a duck to see is there water flown off its back? Uh, why are we getting onto this uh, subject? Uh, but yes, anyway, uh, P.S. Mirandai. Hello there. It's good to see it. Lead ballooners in the house. Winter time is standard time. Summer time is an invention, says Rambog. Maybe we'll go with that. Uh, Mongo is in the house. Good to see you, man. Gassius Maximus, the Irish invented daylight savings. You could be sure of it. You could be sure of it. Shirley Dev says, I think someone decided uh, BST would happen during the summer uh, and they decided to put the clock back to get an extra hour in bed. Then later on in March, I think someone said, hey, you owe us an hour. Never let the truth get in the way of a good rumour. We like it, Shirley Dev. We like it. Uh, now, Sterling is here. Good day, y'all. Great. Uh, it's a great day to watch Murph crash a plane. That's the spirit. Iceman AMD is here. Caleb, good to see you. Welcome in, everyone. Cy Murray's in the house. Watch the story. He says, uh, how's all this fine bank holiday? I'll be joining in on the crack on Vatsim. Uh, nice. Cy, just make sure like you're 100% on the communication. Do you know what I mean? That's what we're going to focus on tonight. Uh, two Dogs is here. Good to see you. Now, where are we at? We're catching up here. We're pressing buttons here and it's all happening. What does this one do? I'm fooled every day, says Martel. <laughs> Daylight savings was introduced during the First World War to allow farmers longer days uh, to work production for food for the troops. Was it? Uh, Adam is in the house. Good to see you. Strap 21 is here. Happy Monday. Uh, now, let me see. Charlie B. Thank you very much indeed. Five months, my dude. Thanks so much for the support, man. Uh, now, I have evidence of Murph's love of Teslas. Keep that in the... Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus, give out. Shh, shh. It's nothing weird or anything. The Irish must have invented April Fools. Probably. Probably. Uh, Martel says, it's also Smigus Dingus today. Smigus Dingus? Huh? Who's that? Uh, the Grand Wazoo has resubscribed to the channel. Five months, man. Thank you very, very much indeed. Great to see you. Now, uh, Two Dogs says, hey to tell you, 
Gibbo. Uh, but even when you retire, you don't have enough time off. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, or what Murphy is trying to say, what not to do when flying with ATC. Uh, that's probably probably more accurate. Yes. Energizer, it's good to see you. Uh, just bought all the famous Guinness Zero. And happy April Fool's Day. I wouldn't be that mad now. Guinness Zero. It's not too bad, but like, you know, Jesus. Uh, Wombat49 is here. Can we get clearance, Clarence? Roger, Roger. I watched the Airplane last night. It's a ridiculous movie. It's brilliant. Uh, now, let me see. Uh, Kanzui's in the house. Hey, everyone. And especially to Gibbo, he says, sabotage, sabotage. Did you see the model work that Kanzui was doing? Now, hang on. I need to kind of, you know, by model work, I don't mean... That's my impression of modeling, right? No, no, no. Um, well, it could be a hand model. Um, Gibbo or uh, Kanzui model making air... Is it Airfix or Revel or one of those? He was making planes and painting them up. That sort of models. Do you know what I mean? Not the... Not that sort of models. Oh, yeah. It's a tough night already. Hair before. Yeah. See what I mean, Engelwood? Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, right now, are we catching up? Yeah, stick with it. Oh, I will. I will, Hemingbird. I will. <laughs> Daz Higgy is here. It's good to see you. Echo Tango, welcome in. Cox Bird Development Team. Seb, where are we at? 21 months. Jesus. Hope you're feeling well, man. Uh, it's great to see you. Captain Rash says, not sure about Vegas. It all depends on work and financial stuff. Gotcha, man. Gotcha. Well, fingers crossed, man. Fingers crossed. Uh, don't stub your toe on Gibbo's yo. She <laughs> behave, will you? Jesus. Zaiti is here. The potholes around Dublin Airport are dynamic. They're nuts, right? They're nuts. Uh, now, let me see. That's why you're early for me. Sad. Ah, PS Mirandai. Yes, yes. Uh, ducks like ducks are waterproof-ish, right? Murph drove home on three wheels and I got my car dirty. I was just as unhappy. <gasps> grand. Uh, Eamon says, I just got in from a long distance trip. I'm still planning and taking part today if I get time to get set up. But don't worry too much, Eamon. The pressure is off. It's it's more the revision stuff we're focusing on. But yes, uh, now where are we at? Uh, hand model for the wee people. Wait, what? What does... Oh no, he does both kinds. Both kinds? Uh, let me see. Uh, Jordan, is it? Jordan? Welcome in. Great to see you, man. So, let me see. Murph, have you heard anything else about the Sam 340? Nothing yet, man. Nothing yet. Uh, vertical, or not vertical, who was making the Sam 340? Um, what's the name of the developer? They made the uh, the Youngman and also the Viking. Uh, and they made the Lear. Remember the mad looking Lear? Was it next gen? They made the mad looking Lear Jet 2100 or something. Do you remember that one? Was it next gen? Uh, I've heard nothing yet. No, no word of a Sam just yet. Um, but yes, Egg Barley is here. Good to see you. Uh, we need a Sab 340. Yes, yes, we do. Sun Jammer's here. Happy Monday, lads. It's great to see everyone. Right, we're going to go over to this screen now. You know, I'll make it look terribly complex. Are we ready? <laughs> ah, sure. How are you now? Now, I just need to kind of get myself set up here so I can actually see what's happening, right? So we have an aircraft here on the ground at Dublin Airport, and this is of the fly-by-wire, but uh, we'll be checking this out uh, later. What I want to do, lads, well, we're going to start off with our course material, because uh, what we're doing tonight, uh, well, it focuses heavily on revision of what we've already covered uh, over the last couple of weeks, right? And it's mad, considering this is Lionheart Creation Super Tight. That's the one. I think Lionheart Creations were making them. Uh, but anyway, so lesson four um, into our ATC course, and, well, it's it's the idea of this showing you the software we're using tonight, uh, your controls. Uh, it, it, it's it's just it, it's just a great tool to have to enhance flying what you're flying. It's pretty cool, right? Uh, oh, it was next gen. There you go. It was next gen simulations, right? Okay. Uh, hey, Rustam is here. It's good to see you, man. And of course, everyone watching us over on YouTube as well. Primo Victoria, good to see you, man. Sticky Rice is in the house. Uh, Iron Knob Airways, Edmund, welcome in, lads. Samuel Tierney, welcome in. When is the tornado coming out on the Xbox? Uh, Weeks, I would say weeks. Uh, Mr. Marco was here as well. Great to see everyone, lads. Right, okay, so uh, over to our page, and, well, this is our main page, uh, tutomurphy.com forward slash IFR, and all these thumbnails, they all have bits of information in them now, which is great. You have your course registration, the assignments, flight planning, the ground school document, that's what we're going to be spending some time in there tonight. Uh, just checklists, notums if we need them, the previous course videos, so on and so on. So, we're going to jump straight into the ground school document. And tonight, well, we're starting off on 7.4. That's the most up-to-date one. Uh, and here we are. And if we scroll down, we'll go all the way down into here. And it has demo flight and revision lesson four. <laughs> there we have it. So, IF4 lesson four. In our fourth lesson, we demonstrate a full IF4 flight with ATC in a shared cockpit environment. 
And when it comes to our revision, well, this is what we're going to review. Flight planning, airport etiquette, voice procedures, adapting to change, and then our aircraft separation and also some spacing. There's quite a lot of stuff here to do. Now, I did include the AIP chart for Dublin Airport. This is the aircraft parking and docking chart. This is something that's unfortunately not present on Navigraph, um, and I included it here, and it's high resolution, so you can zoom in quite a bit and see what you need to do. There are certain things on this chart that we may or may not fully understand when we compare it to something on Navigraph, because you can't really see these lines, right? This is very much specific to Dublin Airport. Uh, there are other airports that would kind of have something similar, but for this, this is specific to Dublin Airport. Now, depending on uh, what version of the sim you have, not where, yeah, well, if you're on the Xbox and you're using the default scenery of Dublin, but well, they haven't included the new runways of 10 left and 2 8 right. Uh, Dublin is only operating on the old scenery of 10 right, 2 8 left, and we have 1 6 and 3 4. However, uh, the new runways are active, and if you have the scenery from MK Studios, well, you're going to have pretty much everything you need, all right? Now, there's additional information here that you probably haven't come across before, and I'm going to chat about them briefly, just so we know what the crack is, right? So, there's notes here, or there's, there's letters here that uh, I want to show you. Hang on there now. Look at the, look at the fancy stuff we have here, look. Uh, we can write on this. So, do you see where it has TRP? If you look at... Uh, Go onto the website, you have a look at your own manual, but they have what's called TRP. Has anyone ever come across TRPs before? Now, spoiler alert, the answer is in, uh, it's in the manual, right? It's in our course document, but we explain what they are. But it's highly likely, highly, highly likely that you will hear, um, you will hear this information. Uh, Rambach says they are there now, are they? Jesus, I couldn't find them. Hang on a second. Let us open up uh, Navigraph. <laughs> Uno Momento. Because if they're on Navigraph, uh, well, even better, right? Even better. So we want to have a look at Dublin, and we want to have a look at the charts, and they're on taxi charts. And what do you call them? 10. Uh, let me see. Airman, good to see you. 10-9. Uh, 10-9. Let's have a look. 10 9. There you go. So we bring over Navigraph. This is all Jefferson's uh, stuff. Ah, oh, yeah, look, okay. So we have TRPs here, Grant. Um, again, if you if you see them, you're laughing. If you don't see them, it's hard to see them. So they're they're referenced here to WS. Yeah. WS on the map says tug release point. So wherever you see WS, as you can see it here, again, we can turn on annotations. Uh flight or pinboard required. Go ahead. Uh so if we highlight this little gadget here. Well, you'll see it wherever WS is. Yeah, zoom in here. Well, then these lines here, these represent your tug release points. Basically, what do they mean when they say a tug release point? This is where your pushback would bring you to. ATC ground or whoever's on, they might give you information to say, um, you know, if you're calling up, you're on stand 615, and they might say uh, push and start approved tug release point, and then the name. And then the name. All right. And so if you ever hear it, tug release point, that is what they are referring to. If we have a look at this map here, uh, well, you'll see it. Tug release point, Juliet, November, Uniform, Foxtrot, so on and so on. All right. So that's what we mean by them. Now, other stuff we have here, we have links, L I N K, links, right? Now, without kind of diving too much into it, at Dublin, you would hear something like, uh, taxi, link two, foxtrot, hold short, link four. You can, usually what's happened, right? So, okay, taxi, link two, foxtrot, and hold short, link four. So what does that mean? Well, let's have a look. So we're going to taxi, let's say we're here. So we're going to taxi this way. There's link two. Here's foxtrot. And we're going to hold short of link four. That's exactly what they mean when they say that to us. All right. And then you might get something else after that or, you know, uh, continue on or go to the next one or whatever. It doesn't matter. But it's only in case you hear this information just to be aware of it. A tug release point is basically where the tug or the tow uh, vehicle, well, that's where they're going to drop you. That's where they're going to release you from. And that's where your initial pushback ends. That's when it stops. All right. So uh, that's grand. I'm, I, that's it. Well done, lads. And we'll see you next week. Brilliant. Right. Brilliant. Uh, right. Continuing on. So. We have some information here. 
Now, don't all get too excited, but I'll blast through this, not to make it a total and utter lecture, but you'll get the idea. Flight planning, of course, it is crucial to us when we want to fly in VATSIM, or any flight for that matter, as it ensures pilots have a comprehensive understanding of various factors such as the weather conditions, airspace restrictions, fuel requirements, the route, and, uh, you know, what station is online, all this sort of jazz, right? So when we need to check the weather, well, you need to do all of this in advance. A lot of folks are just, I'm going to jump on, I'm going to do a flight from A to B, and then they don't actually know what weather they're going to expect. Now, that's relatively fine if you have experience and you're familiar with the areas. But you need to do a little bit of planning when it comes to the weather, all right? Uh, particularly if, you know, depending on your aircraft, uh, certain winds, your aircraft may not be able to operate from a runway. For example, you have what's called a crosswind limitation or the crosswind component. Your aircraft may not be able to safely take off and you'll end up in the bush, you know, in a mess. How did they get here? Do you know? So it's just something to consider. Um, you also need to make sure that you have your charts. You have access to your charts and they're also up to date, right? So prime example here, I use Navigraph. I think it is the best thing since sliced bread. But with Navigraph, uh, I have access to all the charts I can possibly need for any airport. Period. Everything is there, right? So I have access to all my charts. And for example, if I wanted to look at... Um, Oh, sure, look, at if I wanted to look at, uh, you know, a departure, for example. The beauty about Navigraph, well, it actually connects to your SIM via SimLink and everything's able to work together. You'll actually get a visual representation of your aircraft, which makes things very, very easy to track. Super handy. Years ago, you didn't have this level of connectivity. You know, you just, you had to kind of, you know, you'd look at the waypoints, you'd check to see what was on your screen in your FMC, and then you say, well, okay, well, I'm here. Now, the game has changed. They've made this incredibly uh, easier, more accessible. Uh, and that's why we're seeing a lot more traffic on the networks now as well, because of this, right? Uh, so having access to your charts is vital. So before you go flying, ensure that you have your charts for both airports. There's nothing worse. And, oh, I want to fly into, you know, Leitrim, and there's no charts published. Is there even an airport? Do you know what I mean? All right. Next up, then, you have the AirAC or the AirAC data. Now, Air Act data, the aeronautical information regulation and control. Well, basically, this keeps navigation data current with the latest Air Act cycle to maintain accuracy in navigation and instrument procedures within Flight Sim and, of course, everywhere else. Services like Navigraph provide regular updates to the Air Act cycles for various Flight Sims, and uh, they typically update themselves every 28 days. Now, Microsoft Flight Sim do have their own Air Act data, and, and they push that out usually once a month, and, uh, well, Navigraph is probably the most current. It relies on Jeppesen to give them all the information, uh, which is very, very good. So do be sure that your Air Act is up to date. What could happen? You could suddenly have a new uh, SID or there could be a new star and you don't have access to that. So if you're on SimBrief and you're putting in your flight plan and next thing, you know, it, it chucks out a couple of different things and suddenly you're saying, ah, bother, I don't have the charts for this. Or worse, your FMS or your MACDO is saying not in the database, right? So these are all the things to consider for flight planning. Then we have our ATC coverage. So we want to be checking VATSIM to see, well, is there anyone actually controlling airspace? Um, it's not very important for every IFR flight, but if you want to be flying with ATC coverage, well, you want to have an idea of who's on. And we have a couple of ways in which we can have a look at this, right? So we could check out, for instance, we can go to SimAware, and this will show you who's flying, where they're flying, you know, what control is up and so on. So you can see that we have uh, approaches open for Dublin and we have approach open for Shannon. So there's over Ireland, there's actually a lot of ATC, right? Uh, and then you have all the different uh, FIRs up and running as well. This is all a matter of checking it out. Now, there, there is a website you can check out on VATSIM where some ATC controllers actually register. They pre-book their time. It doesn't really happen with Irish airspace. However, we do have a phenomenal a bit of kit set up by Rambog and Gibbo, uh, and it is that called VATCORD, V-A-T CORD. And you can access VATCORD through our Discord server. And basically what this does, when you register your intent, you'll say, hey, these are the following airports I want notifications of. Well, on Discord, you'll get a direct message from the VATCORD bot, and it's going to say, hey, these guys, they're now online, and these are the frequencies that they're at. All right? These are the, the frequencies that they're at. 
Hello there. Um, Joshy, good to see you. Yeah, hundred percent, Joshy. I mean, Vat glasses is very, very good as well. There's just a number of them. You Vat Spy. You know, you have Simaware. And um, if you look at Vat glasses again, it's another. These are great sites. These are phenomenal sites just to see what's actually going on and what's happening. And um, you know what I mean? They're they're all something similar, but yeah, it's 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 kind. I I kind of use a mix of them myself, to be honest. I use a mix of them. But that's uh, VAT glasses, VAT spy, uh, Simaware, they're all there, you know. El Pilito says uh, we can only up update or we can only update AirAC uh, data with Navigraph. Uh, does that mean we can't fly on VATSIM if we don't have a Navigraph subscription? No, not at all. It's just when it comes to your flight planning. Um, if, you know, if, if Navigraph, like, I'll show you, right? So if you're on Simbrief, okay, have a look at this. So if you're on Simbrief, Simbrief is free. This is where you do all of your flight planning. OK, however, you'll notice over here where it says Navigraph Unlimited um, and Navigraph, you know, AirAc 2403 is the current cycle. I have a paid subscription to Navigraph, so I have access to the latest AirAc data. That means this is kind of like the mapping software that Simbrief is going to tap into to provide me with my routing. However, if you go into view AirAc settings, well, what you can do, you can change the date to whatever one you want. So if 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 whatever version, like sometimes they give you AirAc data um when you join up with or when you buy certain aircraft, there's different ways to get AirAc data, or you can indeed you can get it from the sim, right? So Microsoft Flight Sim, for example, I imagine that's currently running on 2402. If you're using the in-sim flight planner, not an awful lot of people use the in-sim flight planner, but it, you can change uh you know what cycle do you want? And we can have a look at more, like you can go right back way way back and all that does it plans your flight based on that information if i'm using the most current which happens to be 2403 good, buddy. that means the flight plan i want simbrief to generate well it's going to base it on the waypoints and airway and all this sort of jazz that's current however uh, if i'm using an older one i just need to tell simbrief hey put me on this Eric data, please. And that's how it works. All right. Uh, Ryan, thank you very much indeed for the subscribe. Uh, seven months, dude. Cheers, man. So you can do all of this from within Simbrief. And Simbrief, it's owned by Navigraph. They own all of this, but it's a free service. If you want to go in and do all your, you know, you can save aircraft, you can look at your flight plans, you can view real world flight plans. They're all there. Uh, so example, if I click on new flight, again, see it here under selections, it's using the current air act data i can change this also from in here right so if i do a plan tonight let's just say lads i'll show you this briefly right if we're going to depart dublin um where are we at now depart dublin going to shannon uh, in an a320 right uh where are we now a321 x and we'll pick this divil here now i haven't listened to dublin but i imagine they're departing 10 uh right i suppose um You'll see here, right, this is using the AIRAC data, which is current between the 21st of March and the 17th of April, right? I can go all the way back to an older one, and it's going to find the routing for me there. Chances are it's going to be fine. Look, it is. Peleg digging and digging, right? But you have another mad one here. You have, you, do you know what I mean? So you can mess around with this. Uh, Scott says, which is what FASM uses, we can... Uh, get you into issues if they change system stars and you're not flying with a current sitter star uh, with possible different restrictions. Again, that's, but, you know, Scott, if that, if a VATSIM controller told me, you know, go direct to something, and it it's unlikely it's not in my charts, but like if I have to go direct somewhere and I don't have that AIRAC data, this is primarily for your flight planning. I mean, you can always tell them unable. I don't have that database. Do you know what I mean? And like, you can go one further. When you're flying in Ireland on VATSIM, uh, the controller, it, it, you'll hear it on ATIS. If you're unable to depart from, if it was 10 left, for example, they ask you to tell the controller. So they'll say, okay, well, he, he doesn't have the scenery. Okay, we'll get him off this runway instead. Do you know what I mean? Like, VATSIM is free and, you know, it's Navigraph. I absolutely love it and I think it's brilliant. And if you're serious about flying online, I would just recommend the subscription. However, if you don't have it, it doesn't mean you can't fly online. It doesn't mean you can't go on to VATSIM. There's other ways you can get your charts. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah. 
Uh, Josh says, if you don't have the correct nav data and a different arrival example, the Bagzo 1 Romeo instead of the Bagzo 2 Romeo, please tell us. There are some changes, especially with the Norton Arc. Yeah, you just tell them. But again, like when you go to file a flight plan, um, and this all comes into information and communication. Yeah. So when you want to file a flight plan on, you know, uh, VATSIM, you can tell them in the remarks. I mean, any information you can give the controller, you're helping... Uh, you're helping the flow of communication. You can tell them, listen, you know, I'm a newbie or whatever. My call sign is this, right? Um, and just put in your air act number. There's no reason why you can't put in your air act number. So they have an idea. Ah, okay, this guy's using an older. Okay, that's grand. Now we know what to do. Or now we, now we know what to do. Do you know what I mean? It's just about keeping the information current. Because put it this way, if you're flying, right, and you have your flight plan, um. If ATC asks you to do something and then, you're, you know, you're scuttling around thinking, how do I get this and how do I figure this one out? Uh, it would be an absolute headache and you mightn't have a great experience. If you can let the guys know, the controllers are uh, always helpful. They're always helpful. And uh, it's it's like the lads in Dublin, for example, if you don't have that scenery and like that scenery is active now for almost a year, folks just don't have the scenery yet, which is it is what it is. They still make allowances for that, you know? Uh, just saying it to ensure they are aware, 100%. But again, like, there's, there's ways to mitigate it. If you're going to be serious about flying online, I highly, highly recommend jumping onto this. I mean, even if you sign up at VATSIM, you're going to get the latest air arc anyway. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be a yearly thing. Can you join VATSIM for just a month and then cancel it? You probably could. You're going to get the latest air arc data. Do you know what I mean? If it comes to it. But again, there's other aircraft that release the air arc data as well. Uh, and again, if you wanted to, you could use the InSim flight planning software uh, for your flight plans as well. There's no reason why you can't do that. Not always ideal, but you can still use the sim. I mean, if you go into your flight planning options in the sim, I won't do it now, but you'll see where you can select your runway, select your departure, select your destination, but you can also put in your arrival. Do you know what I mean? So like you, you can still do it from within the sim as well. Um, but yeah, that's 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 the story there. So I better turn me, uh, me gadget back onto... Oh, Jesus, I'm actually saving that because I'm a Muppet. Oh, how do we do this now? Uh, right, back up here now, you devil. Right, so that's how we do that. Hopefully that has answered the question. But between Simaware, VAT glasses, VAT spy, all that jazz, pretty cool. Adam says, if you're unsure about something, just ask us because it's better to ask than to get it wrong. 100%. 100%. If you can... If you can provide as much information, relevant information as possible to the controllers, you're you know, you're making their operation a little bit easier and they appreciate that. They'll, they'll help you out, you know. Uh, it must be a pain to keep finding charts without an avograph. Yeah, th there's other alternatives and like Vatsim does a pretty good job as well in the Learning Center. We'll have a look at that shortly. But yeah, like there's, there's lots of options there, you know. Right, so ATC coverage. I was checking to see where ATC coverage is active, right? Then also your flight sim scenery. Again, we've we've just touched on this, but you verified that you have the scenery for your departure and your arrival. And if there was unroute stuff you wanted to look at, but there's nothing worse jumping into a flight. I'm going to go from here to there. And then you realize, ah, I don't have the gadget, right? Or if there was an update to a, a specific scenery. So let's say, for example, you know, developers some developers charge for the updates some developers don't charge for the updates but dublin is a prime example mk studios released their initial dublin that didn't have the new runway opened it's only when you purchased version two of that scenery then you get the new runway do you know what i mean so you just want to verify and make sure that you're up to date with your scenery as well you also need to review notums or the online resources to determine what active runways and available parking stands for your departure and arrival airports. Now, there's a couple of ways in which you can do this. If you have a look, again, Simaware or VAC glasses or whatever, if you want to spawn in, well, zoom into the airport you're looking at and check to see, well, is there an aircraft on that? No, there's not. Grand. I'm going there, so. Right? So you can tell the gadget, you know, I want to park me plane over here. Is there anyone on it? No, there's not anyone on it. Look, grand, I'm going to go there, right? Or you can have a look at the NOTAMs. Dublin, for example, has an active NOTAM. I think uh, Echo is closed. Link 1 is closed. That's real world stuff. The taxiway, they're, they're, I don't know, they're doing groundwork. It happens, yeah? And other airports as well. 
Some serious notums might include an, a, a runway closure, right? For whatever reason, they could be working on it, it could be damaged, it happens. And a lot of the time that, that filters into the sim as well. Because the lads try to keep it as real as they possibly can, yeah? Um, so that's what you'd want to do. Keep an eye on the actual notums. Again, to find the notums, the AIP of any country is going to give you information, right? Um, or, you know, the official aviation authority, if you like. Um, or failing that, you're going to get the information inside of uh, Navigraph. If you have Navigraph, you're going to get it. So if we were to look at, say, Dublin reference, uh, where are we now? Info, notums. Here's Dublin, right? So we can see runway 10 left, 28 right close, effective on the 2nd of April from 2200 Zulu uh, and expires on the 6th. So it's going to be closed for three days. Now that's in the real world. So they're, they're actually closing a runway in Dublin for three days. Whether or not that'll happen on um, on VATSIM, I don't know. I can ask the lads, Joshy or Adam, but they, uh, there's big note for 10s that no one reads. Do you guys ever include that? on Like when you're staffing up the tower, like, do you guys ever kind of take in the real world notums? That'd be interesting. I can't imagine it'd be easy because if they close the other runways, sure, and you don't have the scenery, most of them know. Okay, okay. This one here, Taxiway Mike uh, is closed. Taxiway November 1 to November 7 is closed. It gives you an idea of what's happening in the real world. Anything like this, anything mad important like this, you're going to catch it on the ATIS. They're going to tell you on the ATIS what's happening, right? Uh, but you can be aware of it here on the notums. Notice to airmen, uh, or across the pond, they say notice to, on, what's it called? Notice to air mission or something. They change the name of it for whatever reason, right? Dougal says, I got a runway notum flying into Edinburgh today. There you go. Bags of shows flight level 10 when it should be 240. The big one is that there is an erroneous altitude on several stars for the tens. Is that... Is that true Navigraph? Is that a Jeppesen issue or what? We've been running with the main runway closed in Dallas for quite a while. Wow. Oh, real world. Okay, real world. Sweet. Uh, but yeah, look, that's what they are. It's just to be aware of them. You know, it's an Air Nav Ireland issue. Gotcha. Okay. It's an Air Nav. So Air Nav are obviously feeding Jeppesen. That's probably the idea. Uh, but then you get the idea. Again, lads, this is a revision. It's to be aware of stuff. That's all. It's not like you must sit down and spend six hours planning your flight. That might only take you 30 minutes. It's not. This is purely to be aware of it, right? I once had a controller ask if I was within the temporary weight limit of a helipad. Are you serious? <laughs> what? Uh, Old Vendor says we did it in the sim as well. There you go. There you go. Um, right, what else do we have here then? Um, active runways and parking stands, yes. Estimate a time off the block. So you're working out when you file your flight plan. If there's an event on... Usually the event organizers, well, they're going to tell you this is the time you're, you're going to be off the blocks, right? Um, if you're just going to do a flight on VATSIM, well, just be careful with your flight plan because this guy's just going to say, well, what time are you, when are you going flying? Yeah, because you'd be putting into this to say what time you're going flying at. And like that information then goes to the controller. Now, they don't really need to stick to it. But like in the real world, if you have a scheduled off the block time at 10 o'clock and you're there at like half eight, you're in the way. Do you know what I mean? So just be aware of that. Any of you guys who have the Phoenix, I think the Phoenix tablet will, will give you the alert to say, hey, you're too early for this flight. Do you want me to change it for you? You ever see that happen? That's the idea, right? Uh, now, um, calculate the estimated time off block based on the planned departure time, your taxiing time as well, uh, and pre-flight preparations. And as we talk about taxiing time, again, this goes back into your fuel and your weight balance. Now, on the simulator, we're laughing. I mean, if, if we mess up, just add in a bit of fuel, right? Um, If you want, or if you want to keep this thing as real as possible, sure, have at it. But just to be aware of it. At a very, very busy airport, um, you could be sitting on the APU longer than you think. You could be running your engines during taxi for longer than you think. Uh, or indeed, if, you know, you've been delayed getting your pushback because it's busy, you got a delay on a taxi, and then at your arrival, you've had to do a go-around. How does that impact on your fuel? That's just to be aware of it. Review the missed approach charts and holds. So this is all about familiarizing yourself with missed approach uh, procedures, holding patterns, and so on. Mutley, welcome in, my dude. 11 months. Thank you very, very much indeed. Uh, we need to ask Bellbro about a go-around, right? Um, looking at the missed approach charts, it's it's... It just if you do it in if you do it in advance, it just makes life so much easier, right? So for example, 
we could be we could dial into Shannon now and you know there's a couple of ways we can find out what are the active runways for instance a couple of ways we can do that uh, we can check uh, our own fact or we can check our own ATIS here on Discord uh, we can have a look at Simmerware or um, VAC glasses right you're going to see the crack down here so if we go down so it's going to say um, information delta is current approach type ILS landing on runway 6 and takeoff is runway 6 Transition level 70, winds are 040 at 8 knots, visibility is 10, few clouds at 1000, uh, scattered, broken, uh, Q&H 9 or 9 or 4. So you can actually see the ATIS information just by hovering over it. Information delta is current. So runway 6, okay. So I know they're, they're currently using runway 6 in Shannon. Now, are they going to be using that in two hours time? Glad you asked. That's why we check out the weather, right? So numerous ways you can check the weather again i don't need to harp on about it but if we want to have a look at shannon right go back to my airports have a look at shannon over up there let's look at the weather this is the METAR situation winds four zero at eight knots what about the taf the terminal area forecast weather forecasting well let's have a look so it's becoming uh let me see winds uh where are we at here now zero five zero seven knots it's going to start raining right um probability 30 that's okay more showers there um broken clouds there's no mad changes with wind from what i can see at least on the taf now the taf usually give you was it 12 hours or something um and then we've other websites we can check out as well one of my favorite ones is called venture sky so we get to venture sky have a look at the wind speed hey, good morning. this is current uh, we can change this to knots if we wish uh, go back over here so here's knots so yeah four or five knots in and around kind of this neck of the woods right and again you change the altitude 10 meters above the ground 30 feet that's as close as we're going to get it right dj gunnery thank you very much indeed for subscribing um if however we want to jump ahead this is showing me at you know nine o'clock at 11 o'clock eh, no real changes but what about you know 0700 tomorrow morning oh there's a slight change but not really enough you can see the direction of what's happening yeah so you want to be doing this sort of stuff. There's a front moving in as well. If you move ahead in 24 hours time, what's the wind doing? Well, if you look at it very, very closely, it's actually starting to turn a bit. So this time tomorrow night, it's possible 2-4 will be active. Only possible. But again, this goes into your flight planning. If you're doing a long haul flight, right? You know, and you're leaving Dublin now. Uh, where is it now? Tuesday back into monday if you're leaving you know dublin at eight o'clock and it's nice and calm at four knots with a slight kind of westerly wind or easterly wind going to the west and you want to fly to america but like at 0400 you need to make sure you know what the wind is doing at 0400 because if you oh you know if you only monitor what's happening now so the weather's going to change in the five or six or seven hours it takes you to get over there do you know what i mean so that's what you need to be aware of and again uh, you know, you can go different altitudes if you want to see, well, you know, what's me, what's me cruise going to be at here, you know, um, and so on and so forth. You know, that's only 3,000 feet. You go up proper height, <laughs> right? I mean, that's, Jesus, but they're like your, your Atlantic drifts and all the sort of jazz and the, uh, what do they call them? The jetways, right? That's, that's, that's showing you all the information there now. But it gives you an idea, right? Venti Sky, it's a free website. It's like the windy or rainy or whatever they're called now. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, pretty cool, right? That's what you do with that. So that's making sure that, um, you know, reviewing the missed approach charts and holes. So runway six is active in Shannon. So that's okay. Let's have a look at the chart for Shannon, the approach, and let's look at the ILS for runway six. The missed approach for Shannon, because you want to be doing this now rather than having to worry about it later on, yeah? So this is the information I need here. Mr. Approach, climb straight ahead to November, November 005, climbing to altitude 4,000 feet. Then we're going to turn left at a maximum speed of 220 knots, in which we can absolutely highlight that, because that could be, uh, you know, max 220 knots, inbound to the VOR to initiate another approach, or as directed. So we're kind of planning, hey, if this doesn't go according to plan, if for whatever reason, you know, when I come in for a landing on 06, for whatever reason I need to go around, you're unstable, someone is on the runway, ATC didn't give you your landing clearance, right? Well, then you're going to have to go Mr. Approach, in which you would call out Firefly 235 going around or Mr. Approach. 
once you report that, ATC will probably say, you know, Mr. Poach via the published chart, right? Or the published uh, procedure. Or they might vector you. They might tell you something different. It all depends on how ATC are dealing with that area at that time. But at least we have a good idea. Climb straight ahead up to 4,000 feet. And we're planning then to go to the VOR and swing all the way back around again. At least now we have an idea, right, if I can't land the thing, what happens next? If you pre-plan it, it just takes so much stress out of the situation of, ah, what do we do next? I know what to do. Unplug everything and disconnect from VATS. Like, you just, you don't want to go that road. It takes moments to, okay, that's what I need to do. Fair enough? Okay. Uh, right. Uh, also, holdings. Hold me now, Johnny Logan. But if an airport is very, very busy or a certain area on approach or departure, it's it's very, very busy. And for whatever reason, you're transiting or you want to land. Well, ATC might instruct you to enter a hold. Now, we'll do more on holds at a later lesson. It's, it's, it's relatively advanced because different countries, some of the holding instructions vary slightly. Speed limits, altitude limits, all that sort of jazz. Um, but it's it's basically a hold. I mean, you're, you're staying in a certain area you're circling in a certain area right and holds are published right uh, if you want to have a look at the charts you'll see what the here's a hold here look that's what this gadget is so it's telling you maximum 220 knots uh maximum flight level is 140 minimum is 3000 feet and they are left hand turns denoted by the arrow yeah you get the idea so they might ask you to enter a hold. Unlikely you're going to get it at the base of the runway. You're probably going to get it somewhere out at, uh, you know, you could be told enter a hold out in, uh, let me see if I go to IFR. You know, you could be out here by, you know, Rerka, enter a hold at Rerka. And again, you can throw that in if you need to. If you need to throw that in uh, into your FMC or your MacDo, well, we'll show you how to do that at a later date. How do you set up your onboard computer in your aircraft to actually execute a hold, right? Uh, and would you believe it, holding is only relatively new with Microsoft Flight Simulator. I mean, they only cracked that egg maybe a year and a half ago. Prior to that, you had to do it manually, which was a real pain. Because now you have to get drift and aiming off for wind and speed deviation and all that sort of jazz, right? So uh, that's what we mean by that, by holds, right? Uh, then software considerations. Verify installation and update stats of your flight planning software, such as Navigraph, such as, you know, your Simawares or VAC glasses. And your sim brief, you want to make sure that all these are all working. You know, uh, sim brief went down a couple of months back and it was off for a couple of hours. What alternatives do we have? That's what you'd be looking into there. All right. Are we happy enough so far? Grant. Uh, are you keeping the VODs for these? Yes, Frankie. They're all available on YouTube. Everything there. Like tonight, tonight is revision based on what we've already covered, but, but hopefully you're picking up something new here as well. All right. Uh, donut, no, we're not an hour early at all. That's why we do the um the reminder thingies. Uh, so we've daylight saving. So Zulu time has gone back an hour. So uh, our streams are now 1900. But uh, don't worry, everything's saved on the VOD. Everything's there, yeah. So I uh, just landed in Edmonton, 25 knot winds and I greased it hard. Man, quiet, good, good stuff. Now, airport etiquette. This is all about, you know, be nice, right? Courteous to other people, to other road users. You often hear that said. But your airport etiquette. Now, in the real world, airport etiquette, could it can mean anything, right? And there's different rules at different uh, airports or airstrips and all this sort of jazz. Um, for, for instance, a small little thing to consider, you know, airport etiquette nearest me, me local uh, airfield. When the hangar door is open, don't taxi in front of the hangar door. Why? For sure, you're going to be kicking up grass and dust and all that sort of lovely stuff off the ground and you're going to kick it straight into the hangar where more than likely they have the cowling or panels taken off the aircraft, they're working with oil or they're giving their aircraft a clean and then here comes a Muppet, do you know, full power and he taxiing by it. It's all to do with like, ah, look at that Egypt, why did he do that? We're talking about airport etiquette, right? How best to, to behave. And it, you try and lead by example. You're always going to get the one Aegis or you might get someone who's genuinely struggling. But once you're aware of, okay, well, I need to be careful here. If I do something or, you know, if something happens, you need to identify quickly, okay, well, I'm in the wrong or something needs to happen, right? So it's essential for maintaining safety and efficiency in aviation operations. It encompasses various practices such as proper communication with ground personnel and other pilots, Adherence to taxiway limits, correct use of aircraft lights, 
and knowing when and where to spawn your aircraft. Hmm. For instance, if you want to be in Shannon, right, and, uh, you know, you're going to spawn in, in a 747 over at light parking, or light aircraft parking. Yep, yeah, I'm going in there now, my big 747, that's my spot. Ah, yeah. But there's always one, right? Or, you know, uh, you might get a helicopter on stand 39, uh, go handy at the jetway, or the, the, the air bridge, <laughs> right? It's, it's figuring out, well, hang on, where, where can I start? Where can I start from, or where do I spawn in? Can I spawn on an active taxiway? No. Can I spawn in on an active runway? No. Um, what happens if you spawn in and there's someone else there? Or let's say, for example, uh, you know, you've, you've a 737 on stand 30, and then you jump in with a, when it comes out, an A380 at 32, which you're blocking two other stands. It's having the bit of kind of, which is, I better not do that. Or, you know, I need to do that. Like 37 is the widest, uh, and you also have 23. They're the widest. Uh, or they'll throw you on out of the 21 or 22. That's just specifically for Shannon. Dublin Airport is no different. There are areas that they don't want larger aircraft because uh, you have limits, especially over this neck of the woods. And uh, you'll actually see it written on the taxiway. They'll give you the uh, maximum width of the aircraft. It'll be there, right? Um, what else? Some of the taxiways. So you have all that information and st stuff to be aware of. You don't want to be spawning your aircraft in and in places uh, you shouldn't really be there, right? So it's all about etiquette, right? So, uh, we're over here, look. Spawning locations. Pilots should spawn their aircraft at designated parking stands or the gates whenever possible. Avoid spawning directly onto active taxiways and runways or in close proximity to other aircraft to prevent congestion and obstruction. Again, don't, like, park an inch away from another fella. You know, Dublin can't take 380s anyway. No, but when the A380 comes out... What's going to happen on that sim? Right? Do you know, Firefly 235 Super. Ah! Inbound for the ILS. No, you're not. You're not. Go home, Murph. <laughs> Go to Shannon or something. Do you know what I mean? It could happen. It's just having the, you know, having the notification. It'd be, it'd be similar to, um, it'd be similar to, I suppose, Concord operating out of airports as well. Do you know? Anyway, uh, we say here, ensure that the chosen spawn location does not interfere with ground movements of other pilots uh, or obstructing access to important facilities. Don't worry too much about the facilities. Do you know what I mean? Adam Controls is here. It's good to see you, man. Welcome in. Ground movements. Prior to taxiing, perform a thorough pre-flight check to ensure that the aircraft is ready for movement. Again, this comes through our flows when, we, when we're ready to talk to ATC. When we taxi, maintain awareness of surrounding aircraft and we must adhere to the designated taxi routes. You'll hear it on that sim. At some stage, you're going to hear it. Someone's going to miss their turn or, you know, they're, they're, they'll overshoot where they're supposed to stop. It can happen quite a lot, right? Follow instructions from ground controllers if available uh, or communicate intentions via Unicom frequency if operating at uncontrolled airspace. So you need to let people, what's happening, where are you going and so on. And then yielding to other aircraft and ground vehicles when necessary. Don't worry about ground vehicles. Uh, but when it comes to yielding to other aircraft, highly unlikely you'll need to do this yourself because ATC usually are on the ball. Uh, however, there are certain rules when it comes to yielding. Who has the right of way? And if you scroll up, we actually talk about it in this manual as well, right? We actually go through it in detail. Then we have this section on the use of aircraft lights. Now, these can change a little bit depending on the airline who operate them. Some airlines have slightly different rules, but... By and large, this is pretty much, pretty much the way they kind of do it, right? Um, and if there's anything not right in here, let me know. But usually, once your battery comes on, your nav and logo lights, get them on, right? So you have electrical power in the aircraft, nav lights and logo lights if you need them. Now, sometimes they won't bother um, with, you know, uh, logo lights if it's daytime. It depends on the airline. During ground services, uh, if required, turn on your wheel well lights. You'll see the switch, especially in the 7.3s. Wheel well. Pfft, turn on the lights. After refueling, then you activate the seatbelt. And uh, that's when you activate the seatbelt sign. After refueling. No smoking goes on before that. Just before push back, turning on the beacon lights. That's letting people know on the ground uh, that you're about to start moving. Right? Uh, after ground crew clearance for taxi, you switch on your taxi lights. So you allow the crew to get out of your way. 
again, that's following kind of real world stuff. You don't want to blind them. Aircraft lights are very bright. You might have noticed that. You can see them from miles away in the sky. On the ground, they're very bright. Uh, when crossing a runway, activate your strobes. Now again, some will tell you to turn on your landing lights and your strobes as you're going across an active runway. Um, but as a minimum, activate your strobes as you cross a runway. You're on an active runway. So strobes go on. Just remember to turn them off again as soon as you leave the active runway. Prime example could be um, at Dublin, you know, you're getting an instruction to cross runway 1634. You're going this direction down here. Um, and as you're onto this area, on come the strobes. Once you pass the whole short bars, strobes on. All right. Uh, during taxi or during your taxi hold, uh, taxi lights usually go off because you're waiting. Uh, during de-icing, turn off your logo lights, leaving only your nav and beacon lights on. Again, that depends on the company. Uh, holding short for takeoff, if arriving traffic, uh, turn off your taxi lights. When you're cleared for takeoff, before entering the runway, turn on your strobes, your landing lights, and your wing lights. Basically, light them all up. Get them all up. You know. Um, Josh says, you don't need to turn on the strobes when crossing 1-6, considering it's actually inactive. Yeah, okay. Sweet. No one's going to give out to you for, you know, for something like that, turn off your strobes. If you're going around with your landing lights and your strobes on in and around the apron, that's where, you know, you're going to draw attention to yourself. But yeah, it depends on the airport. Um, immediately after takeoff, turning off your taxi lights. Again, it, it depends on the airline. Uh, but usually at 10,000 feet, or if you're going for a high altitude departure, usually at 10,000 feet, lights off. All right. Um, turn off your landing lights, wing lights, uh, seatbelt sign, depending on turbulence. Uh, the logo light, if it's a long haul, company policy will dictate if you have that on or not. And then during your landing, uh, follow the same steps in reverse. Additionally, before turning into the parking spot, usually you switch off the taxi lights to avoid blinding ground staff. But again, Murphy's Law. What happened here? Well, the plane crashed into the terminal. Jesus, how did you how did you manage that one, Paddy? I couldn't see where I was going. Uh, I had to turn off my lights. Jesus, then we put lights on the plane so you could see where you're going. You turn them off. Common sense. You don't have to. But it's a rule of thumb. If you're at an airport and it's all nicely lit up and you can see what you're doing, sure. But this is, you know, airport etiquette, right? That's all. There's no real people on the ground looking at your lights in a flight sim. You get the idea, right? SK Sun is here. Good to see you. What altitude do landing lights go off in the States? Uh, it'd be 10,000 as well. Same for, it's it's kind of half international. Half international, you know? Um, but yes. Management of wing lights vary depending on the company and then avoiding the excessive use of lights. This is kind of important, you know, when we're flying on VATSIM. Avoid using the strobe lights and landing lights uh, uh, at the stands or at the gates or during taxi. Makes sense. And like, if you're taxiing and it's like, the sim kind of does it well, but like if you're in the clouds, in real in the real world, if you're in heavy IMC conditions, you turn off your strobes at night because you're going to blind yourself. You won't see. Them strobes flash, it just illuminates all the clouds around you. Um, so there's ways around that. But again, listen, these are nice to know. It's all to do with etiquette. That's all. Don't be that guy. Read this first. Do you know? Uh, strobes on for nightclub fields. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 100%. Now, taxiway limits. Uh, now, you might say, well, speed is key. When it comes to your taxiway limits and, and basic behavior when you're taxiing, speed is key. There are two extremes that can cause a, just a headache to controllers. Number one. Your taxi speed is too fast. If you're moving too fast, chances are you're going to make a mistake, you're going to leave the taxiway, or you won't be able to stop in time to make your hold short. Right? The general rule of thumb, you're taxiing somewhere between 12 and 16 knots, and then when you're away from everyone else, 22, 23 knots, that's kind of the, the upper limit. You have what's called high-speed taxiway and all this sort of jazz, but generally as you're just moving around the airport on taxiways, 15, 16 knots, very comfortable. You know, if there's no one else around you or you see there's a bit of a queue, bring it up to 20, 22 knots, something like that. But that's away from the terminal. When you get in close and there's other traffic and you have to make kind of big turns, get the speed right down. You can always speed up again. That's the first issue. The second problem is if you go too slow, right? Here's a fella and he's only moving at six and a half knots. Ah, uh, jeez, it's going to take us all day. Don't be that person, right? Keep the flow of traffic. Move with the traffic. If there's an aircraft ahead of you and they're absolutely crawling and they're causing a delay, the controller may tell them to do something mad. Turn left, hold, you know, turn left onto Sierra 4 um, and wait. <laughs> 
hold short one way, whatever, 10 right, and leave them there, you know, and then they'll say, yeah, okay, uh, you can enter the runway, taxi back, or taxi to Sierra 3, turn left on Sierra, and hold short Sierra 7. Like, if you really want to annoy someone, they'll, they'll give you something like that. They'll just keep you in a constant taxi loop on the ground. Do you know what I mean? Unlikely that it'll happen, because well, we're not going to do that. But um, if you're going too slow, that's more of a problem. It's more of a problem for the controllers. If you're going too fast, it's more of a problem for the pilot, for us, because we're going too fast. If you go too slow, you're creating a level of complexity for the controller. Because remember, they're trying to keep the thing moving. They have departures, they have arrivals, they have all this jazz to be worrying about. So you want to make sure, watch your speed. Not too fast, not too slow. The other thing we need to talk about are the taxiway uh, excursions or incursions. You don't want to go past any of the whole short lines. You don't want to leave a taxiway, right? Uh, you don't want to make a mistake and then immediately just turn around and hopefully no one sees you. Talk to ATC, like tell them where you're at. You can give a call, Firefly 235, I'm after missing Foxtrot, I'm holding short, you know, uh, 1-6 at Alpha. Sorry about that, we don't need to apologise, life's too short to apologise. But for whatever reason, the sim has a glitch and then suddenly, boom, it's just launched at 20 feet. It can happen, lads. Shout. This is what's after happening. They might get onto you on V Pilot. What did you do that for? This is what happened to me. Oh, okay, fair enough. Grind, go this way, proceed this way. Keep the communication open. It's important. All right. Hold short lines are vital. You need to check them out in your charts. If you have an avograph, you're laughing. If you don't have an avograph, you're gonna see them on the uh on the AIP stuff anyway. If you scroll up here, you'll see where all the hold short uh, lines are. Yeah? Them fellas. Don't pass them. Just don't pass them. And then when it comes to all your normal taxiing as well, stay in the permitted taxiway areas. All right? So, you know, just, just stay there. Now, uh, we're down here, look. Uh, holding short, we just touched on that already. When holding short, ensure that the entire aircraft is clear of the runway and hold short lines to allow unimpeded runway operations. It's all well and good to say, my front wheel is over the hold short line. Yeah, but sure, like, the rest of your plane is still blocking, blocking the runway. Do you know what I mean? So you want to make sure you are fully passed. An advantage we have is flight simulation where we can press a button and suddenly you have an external view of what's happening. The brakes immersion. Well, it, in case like this, unless you're very familiar with the airport, just go external. Yeah, I'm, I am clear of this entire runway. There's like, I'm no issue. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Josh says, uh, and pilots should also read the ATIS because it may have some useful stuff uh, as where to plan to vacate from. Uh, such as Taxiway Alpha in Dublin, the amount of pilots that go on uh, or on it uh, are too many. Yeah, 100%. And again, right, if you're looking at where you're going to exit from, you'll be doing this during your planning. You're going to be saying, okay, well, listen, you know, Shannon, for example, we're going to be arriving on runway 06. Despite my best intentions, right, Alpha is just not an option. You're not, if I'm in a Cessna 172, maybe, but if, if I'm flying an airliner, I ain't going to get off at Alpha, not without doing something mad right so i know i'm going to be well it's either going to be charlie or delta a lot of the time we'd be aiming for charlie atc might instruct us when we're on you know we're, we've, we've done our ground roll we've, we've landed and uh, we're rolling out and we get the instruction exit at charlie if for whatever reason you can't if you're moving too fast or you you, you just can't make the call you're the pilot in command unable Oh, okay, we'll have to move you. Now, don't take the Dennis Hickey out of it. Like, if you're crawling along and you just choose not to do that, you're going to have a bad day. Do you know what I mean? But if ATC asks you to do something and you genuinely are unable, if they tell you, expect... That's, uh, hang on, I'll, I'll show you a different version. The Shannon is relatively easy. If you look at Dublin, if you were to land on 10 right and they'll say, expect or plan departure or plan to vacate at Sierra 3, for example, Sierra 3, okay, well, what happens if you land and you can't make it? I mean, apart from throwing the anchor down, full reverse, full brakes, full flaps, and engage the parking brake, right? Um, if you can't do it, you can't do it. But they're asking you to plan for it. Plan for it. Or they might say Sierra 1. Right? Just be aware from it. And don't be, you know, don't let it knock you for six if ATC asks you, you know, we want you to vacate at a certain taxiway point. That's only because they're controlling stuff on the ground, you know. Or maybe one of the lads wants to see 
how is this fella going to react in a challenge? <laughs> right? Um, using Shannon as an example, 2-4. Oh, yeah, 100%. Sorry, Adam. Yeah, 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 yeah. 2-4 at Shannon. If we were flying or landing on 2-4, you want to get off at Alpha. Now, we had this last week. Our arrival was actually 2-4. And by and large, we were grand. Um, if you missed Alpha for whatever reason, well, think of the flow or the interruption to flow uh, that you're going to cause. Now, it's not a big problem, just to be aware of it. We're talking about etiquette, right? If you land on runway 2-4, you know straight away, well, you want to be getting off, you want to be off the runway by Alpha. Otherwise, you got to go past Alpha, back taxi, and then come back up. It, it's almost like the walk of shame, right? But for whatever reason, you as pilot in command, you're in charge of the aircraft. It's your landing rate. It's all that jazz, you know? Um, But yeah, like, 2-4, if you come in here, you want to be getting, uh, you want to be planning your, your exit of the runway, vacating onto Alpha. It's not the end of the world if it doesn't happen, but just to be aware of it. All right? So that's what we mean by that. And uh, now, monitor radio communications for clearance to cross or enter the runway from ground or tower controllers. So if you're given a hold short, your ears need to be like just waiting, waiting, because you're expecting a further clearance. All right? Right. So that's our airport etiquette. Now we talk about our voice procedure and there's a couple of important things I just want to ramble off on these but as you can imagine voice procedure it's all well and good pressing the button and start talking we need to follow a procedure right uh, it's crucial when it comes to effective communication in aviation and it works both ways ATC need to follow this and the pilots need to follow this if either one of them deviate it becomes Difficult, right? Heavy accents. They could say something that you haven't heard before. Phraseology. If they're using slang words. Huh? What did he say? I have to do what to who? Right? So keep the thing simple. It's, it's, it's later on when, you, you know, you've, you've built up your experience. You're very comfortable with the areas. You recognize the controllers. It's grand. But starting off, your voice procedure, it's so critical. So critical, right? Basically, what it says, it entails the use of standardized phrases clear pronunciation and concise speech to ensure messages are transmitted accurately and efficient between pilots and air traffic controllers. For example, Asher, how are you Dublin? What's the crack? I'm Firefly 235 and uh, I'm going flying today on me uh, runway uh, 28. Well, that, no, 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 it doesn't work on VATSIM. Now, it doesn't mean you sit here all terribly proud and, you know, it, it, it's, it's a balance between the two of them. Kind of, sort of, right? Adhering to the established voice procedures, it enables pilots to convey vital information swiftly and comprehensively, minimizing the risk of a misunderstanding or an error. Right? It includes utilizing the phonetic alphabet codes for letters such as alpha for A and bravo for B and so forth. Uh, I'm taxiing here on A. Was that J or A? Huh? You get me idea, right? Um, additionally, voice procedure emphasizes the importance of maintaining a professional and focused demeanor on the radio that facilitates smooth and effective communication within the aviation environment. Clarity and efficiency. When we communicate with ATC, prioritize clarity and uh, brevity to ensure effective transmission of information. So you'll always get this, you know, uh, uh, Shannon uh, Control. Fire uh, fly uh, two three five is uh, oh Jesus where am I uh, I'm over uh, Bagzo yeah and uh, you, you don't want that either it's all about keeping the thing moving concise very clear you don't want to say it, it you know military efficiency right but you're not far off it you know keep it short sweet to the point and you're not doing it in such a way that you know you're going too fast. You need ATC to understand you. And also for the ATC controllers, I mean, they'll know not to rock the boat with someone, right? If you're dragging the heels completely, you're creating a headache for them. You're, you're giving them a bad headache. Do you know what I mean? You don't want to do that. Keep radio transmissions concise and to the point, avoiding unnecessary elaboration or uh, other makey-uppy 
details. 10-4, a copy. Get your ears on, good buddy. That's a big 10-4. Do you know? <laughs> Focus on conveying essential flight-related information such as position, intentions, requests, and acknowledgements in a clear and concise manner. Right? So, yeah, I'm just over that waypoint there now, look. Was, who was he talking to? Right? You need to focus on the script that's here in our document as well. Follow the script. Dougal, have you been drinking? I have, Ted. I've been drinking like a mad idiot. The only exception to the rule is with you on April Fool's Day. Prime example. With you. Now, we all hear pilots say it. In the real world as well. With you. Nowhere in any sort of ATC phraseology at all have I found the word with you. It's not in the manual. You're not to do it, but people do it. Why do you do it? Well, that fella over there does it. Yeah, when, why does he do it? Because well, that one up there did it. Huh? And that's what happens, right? With you. It's the weirdest thing to say. It's the weirdest thing to say. Shining Control, Firefly 235, with you. Flight level 9 or 0, overhead, Deegan. And also, but you feel like you need to do some sort of a genuflect or something, you know? Uh, but yeah. With you. Yeah, with you. With you is such a waste of time. We know you're with us. Right? I wonder could we I wonder could we put a new one up there? Like see it is see it. We'll see it, right? That see ya. Hello there. And that's progressively getting legs now where, you know, you're giving your departure, you know, um monitor unicorn one two two decimal eight. See ya. What did he say? Did he say soup? Is he vomiting? What right? So see it is starting to creep in there now. But we kind of do that. See it's a bit of crack. That's the next one. But the with you business. I mean, what? With you. Do you know? Some of us do say that on air for decades. Yeah, yeah. With you. Couldn't do this without you. Infinity Games, good to see you. Looking for clearance, right? Uh, meow. Oh, yeah, you can say meow as well. Uh, we're on uh, stand 3-0, meow. Are you saying meow? But what we're saying is you don't need to add these things in, right? We'll see you or see you. It, it, it depends on the part of the world you're in. Good luck to you. That'll be a new one next. But like, what I'm saying is, especially from the introduction and learning this stuff, forget all of that noise. It's follow the thing. Your, your communication, when you're pressing that button, your push to talk, when you're communicating with ATC, keep it very clear. Keep it simple. You know, you don't need to go into mad things. Mad things, you know. Uh... I believe some real world got in trouble for meowing on ground. Yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. Do you know? Have a Disney day. Oh, Jesus. You get the idea, right? But you're here with you. Like, we were listening to ATC on Saturday and like real world pilots, uh, Dublin Approach, Good Evening, Sham uh, Shamrock, whatever he was, 2-3 Yankee Alpha with you. Do you know? I was about to march. March I was over to the tower. Get him on the blower. <laughs> I want a word of them. It's, it's not going to get you in trouble, but just be aware of it, lads. You don't need to... Use, like, you have enough to be worrying about without adding in more words. Do you know what I mean? And I'm not saying you can't be in a friendly environment. You can't have a little bit of fun on this. Of course you can. But there has to be clearly defined limits, right? I'm going to have an L waffle now with the lads on the owl. That's him. Talking, utter, scutter for the night. Don't do that, right? That's him is not the platform for that. If you want to do that... Jump onto a voice channel or whatever. Don't do it on that sim. It doesn't work there, you know? A time and place for everything. Indeed. AJH is the next one. Spitfire, that'll happen. That'll be, you know, Firefly to Firefly. AJH, AJH. Telling you, telling you. Avoiding overload. Recognize that ATC frequencies may be shared by multiple pilots simultaneously, making it essential to avoid monopolizing the airwaves with excessive chatter. You've, we've all heard it, right? Poor old devil's getting in trouble as well. But just be aware of it. There are other people on the network. Refrain from engaging in prolonged conversations or unnecessary banter on the frequency. This can disrupt or disrupt communication flow and impede the ability of controllers to manage aircraft efficiently. Not only that, lads, but when you're listening on ATC and you're waiting for the gap for you to start talking... This comes back to etiquette. You don't want to be jumping on in a mid-conversation. Prime example. Tower has given a landing instruction to Firefly 9 or 9 or 9, right? 
and they'll say something like Firefly niner 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 uh run or you know wins two six zero at four knots runway two four clear to land and then suddenly Shannon approach good evening Firefly 235, request clearance, I have four. Right? No, you have to pick your moments. Choose your battles. Do you know what I mean? And it's, it's the only way you're going to get comfortable with this is by observing and listening to what goes on. That's all. There's nothing worse. And then someone else will jump on. You'll have two or even three people talking on frequency. It happens in the real world. It also happens on VATSIM. It happens. Just be aware of it. That's all. Do you know what I mean? But like... When you have, when you have direct, you'll pick it up after a few weeks. When you when you're listening to direct communication between ATC and the pilot, you'll know when that conversation ends. Then it's your chance to get in there. All right. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's, it's just be aware of it. Refrain from engaging in prolonged conversations, unnecessary banter. So we know the crack. Professionalism. What? Yes, you have to speak very well dressed. Maintain a professional. I'm in a glass case of emotion. <laughs> Maintain a professional demeanor when communicating with ATC, refraining from using slang, colloquialisms, or informal language. Could you imagine the crack here now? Do you know what I mean? Uh, Shannon Tower, Firefly Two Three Five. There's a <laughs> over there, and he's looking like a big. <laughs> you just like that's just not going to end well. That'll be um, Firefly Two Three Five disconnect. Uh, and, uh, you know, expect people knocking on the on the doorbell of your house because they're going to go in and bathe the shite of you, right? You, you need to be aware of that. It's not the network for that. And it's not to say, oh, we're all, you know, awkward and, you know, terribly pale because we don't go outside. No. Vatsim is doing its very best to provide a very professional service. And you're always going to get the slag in between, oh, you're on Vatsim versus, you know, IVAO, or you're on IVAO instead of Pilot Edge. You're always going to have that bit of, you know, um, competition, whatever else, right? But do yourself the justice of you keeping things professional because the controllers will. We've, if I've heard it, Sometimes controllers can get absolutely overwhelmed if aircraft aren't doing what they want to do. We are all but human at the end of the day. Try and keep things professional. If you know a controller is under pressure, don't add, you know, fuel to the fire. And likewise, they'll be watching that for you as well. Do you know what I mean? Do as he says, not as he does, right? Uh, Murph points out not to swear by swearing. Yeah, yeah. Common sense, exactly. It's funny that you have to bring this up, but you have to bring this up, right? Uh, avoid, or avoid using profanity. We know about that. And uh, focus on conveying pertinent information in a courteous and respectful manner. Now, it doesn't mean Shannon Ground. Good morning. How are you? You look terrific. Firefly 235 is in a beautiful A320. And I'm wearing Jean-Claude Bathillon cologne. I'd like to request my IFR clearance to the lovely city of Dublin. I have the information of the beautiful Bravo on board. Over. No, that's not going to work either, right? So it's all about pertinent information. Must know, should know, could know. Must know. You need the must know. You know, that's the dead Dublin 4. The Dublin 4 pilot, right? <sighs> but yes, you get the idea, right? You get the idea. Directness. Be direct and specific in your communications with ATC, avoiding ambiguity or vague language that may lead to misunderstandings. Right? Aaron Jesus, I just wanted to go over there. Do you know where, um, do you know where the Ryanair lads wash uh, their cars? I want to park my airplane over to where they wash their cars. Aaron, is somewhere over there beside your... What? Keep it so direct. Re you know, permission or request... Uh, parking or request stand 30, all that sort of stuff. All right. Clearly state your requests, your intentions, or responses to ATC instructions using standardized phraseology and terminology. Roger, Wilco, that kind of stuff. A firm, yeah? Sounds like a very specific pilot, I know. <laughs> Minimize unnecessary repetition or rephrasing of messages to maintain clarity and efficiency in communication changes. And this might come back to, you know, for example, it happens a lot, um, not so much with the airliners, but it does happen a lot with private aircraft. Your call sign, November 235 Romeo Mike. 
okay, that's the, that's a call sign I use, November 235 Romeo Mike. Um, if ATC referred to me as, uh, you know, 5 Romeo Mike, well, that's how I'm going to, okay, I'm 5 Romeo Mike now. I don't need to keep saying November 235 Romeo Mike. 5 Romeo Mike will do. It's being aware of that. Minimizing the unnecessary repetition or the rephrasing of words, all right? So yeah, it's it, again, this is, these aren't like live and die by rules. Some of them are just important. It's to be made aware of all of this stuff. Some of this, you might, there might be folks sitting here thinking, how am I going to remember all of this? You're, none of you have done any of the stuff that I'm flagging up, but we need to flag it up in case it happens. That's all, right? So there are three steps of radio communication with ATC. Imagine that. There's only three steps, really. There's only three steps. In order to run, first you must learn how to walk. ATC communications are often seen as confusing and unpredictable for new pilots. However, nearly all ATC radio transmissions in aviation deal with a request, an instruction, and a confirmation. Hmm. The standardized three steps of ATC communication lay the foundation for the way in which aviation communications work. The root of all pilot and ATC communications will have follows the flow of request, instruction and confirmation. These steps ultimately help facilitate with the teamwork focused mission shared between pilots and controllers. Hmm, three steps. So what do we mean? Well, the request. All pilot ATC communications begin with a request. Whether it's for entry into airspace, taxi clearance, takeoff, landing or other instructions, the initial request should use the five W's. And we touched on these earlier on. We we're following Dave uh, 757 spies five w's so who are you calling well who are you where are you what do you know and what do you want so who am i right or who am i calling i'll call up shannon ground shannon ground firefly 235 stand 30 information bravo request push and start that's the idea, right? And you might say, well, you know, who are you? Well, I'm Firefly 235. You might put in, what are you? Well, I'm an Airbus A320. But you get the idea, right? <laughs> Dean, don't you worry at all, man. Like, it's, 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 it's like, do you know what it is? It's like trying to figure out how to get the clutch in a manual gearbox. One day you'll just get it. So don't be, like, this whole course is designed to, you know, take any sort of worry or, you know, fright, whatever, out of the, out of the thing, right? Uh, additional requests can be made during the flight where um, pilots should always monitor the frequency for instructions even though they don't have a specific request at the moment as ATC instructions can be issued at any time. There's nothing worse. You, just, you, you know, you're, you're listening to Celine Dion there. Meanwhile, you have ATC saying, uh, where are you? Right? The instruction. After receiving a request, ATC responds with specific instructions related to the pilot's request. Pilots must actively listen to ATC instructions, begin to comply with them promptly and see clarification if instructions are unclear or they're missed. Instructions may consist of multiple parts and pilots should jot down details to ensure accurate compliance. Now what we mean by jotting stuff down, well you write it down lads. You write the stuff down and you can write it down using a very fancy checklist that I've created or a bit of paper lads, write down the stuff. As much as you think you're going to remember it, if you're controlling an aircraft, depending on the aircraft, it is a comprehensive simulation uh, of systems and all the jazz. Something what you might consider is easy to remember will just pff, gone out the out the gap, and you for, you completely forget about it. So be aware of that, yeah. Um, confirmation. Confirmation is essential to ensure that instructions are correctly understood and received by the pilot. Pilots confirm instructions by repeating back the ATC instruction, along with their call sign, a process known as readback. And you'll often hear ATC after your clearance, read back or read back correct, or they might just say correct, right? This step serves as a safety measure to prevent misunderstandings and ensure effective communication between pilots and controllers. Makes sense, right? It makes sense. Active listening. Good communication requires active listening, a skill critical for maintaining situational awareness and safety during flight. This is where your call sign and get to know your call sign. You'll hear like if I call you by your name, Dave, John, Paul, Robin, Brian, you know, Pavel, Andrew, Jimmy, 
Scott, your ears perk up. Huh? What, me? You know, dad, daddy, father, Faja, right? Your ears will pick up. I know. Celine, Kaylee, Noel, Jacinta, Josephine, Susan, Diane. Uh, you're right. You know, we have to be balanced. Um, but you get the idea. Once you name your name, you, you identify it. You just identify it. So active listening, learn your call sign because your ears will perk up. Wait, was that me? You could be doing lots of other things. Lots of other things. Active listening is important. Pilots are expected to actively monitor the frequency and remain at the controls of their aircraft while flying on the network. You must seek ATC approval for any breaks from the flight deck, right? If you urgently need to step away for a minute, we're human, it can happen. You know, any chance or can I step away for three and a half minutes? Huh? That was very precise. You get the idea, right? Uh, frequency etiquette. Again, effective frequency etiquette is essential for smooth communication between the pilots and controllers. Pilots should consider what they want to say before transmitting it. Listen for ongoing communications on the frequency and wait for previous transmissions to conclude before transmitting. It's, it, it, there's no point elaborating on that. It says it there. Microphone quality and volume levels should be tested before connecting. Uh, again, we, we've, we've, this is just a reminder. And unnecessary phrases should be avoided to streamline communication and enhance efficiency with you and also with you. Adapting to change. Now, bear with, we're nearly there now. Adapting to change. We've already touched on this, but what we mean is, if there is a change, how do we deal with that change then and there? For example, we could file a flight plan and suddenly ATC will say, no, you're not doing that. So let's say we were going to depart out of Dublin on a particular SID. And then ATC are telling us, uh, cancel the SID, fly this heading. Oh, Jesus, what's going to happen next? Oh, what? Don't allow yourself to be panicked. Do you know what I mean? Like, just don't allow yourself to be panicked. So how do you adapt and how do you plan? Recognize the importance of flexibility and adaptability in flight sim, particularly when operating in dynamic and evolving airspace environments. I don't want to say expect the unexpected, but expect, right? Anticipate potential deviations from the original flight plan, which could be due to weather, traffic, ATC instructions, uh, and then we plan for alternative courses and acting uh, and action uh, accordingly. Now, what do we mean by that? Let's say, for example, let's say, for example, there was an event on. Um, and I've seen it happen before. They actually closed an airport. It was too busy and everyone had to go to their alternates. Ah! So you'd be planning your alternate, right? Uh, it's good training for a pilot to, you know, cancel their current active IFR. They might jump to VFR. You could be VFR and all of a sudden you want to fly IFR because the weather has changed. You can do these things on VATSIM. You can pick up your IFR whilst airborne. Um, again, that's advanced stuff. But it's how do you adapt to these changes, right? Now, because we have all these tools that we can monitor to see what's going on and, you know, ATC is live and ah, this uh, does ATC coverage in an area I didn't want to fly into because I'm unfamiliar with it. Uh, how do you adapt to your change? So study, bit of research, look into it, listen, what's happening, monitor what's going on around you. You pick it up fairly quick. The old story is you pick one route, you fly it a couple of times, that is your foundation, that is your basis of knowledge. You grow from that position, you learn more from that position. So if you fly, for example, Shannon to Cork, Shannon to Cork, Shannon to Cork, grand. Let's go Shannon to Dublin, Shannon to Dublin, Shannon to Dublin. Okay, let's do Dublin to Shannon. Let's do Dublin to Cork. You get the idea. You're working at airports, you're building up your knowledge base for, and suddenly they become comfortable for you. Totally comfortable, all right? Uh, conditional clearances, again, you'd be listening out. Tug release point after the taxiing company. You might hear company. If ATC say to you, uh, you know, follow the company on Taxiway Charlie, for instance. Well, if you're a Firefly Air and, you know, the other aircraft is a Firefly Air, company is referring to the same company that you're with. If you're British Airways and there's another Speedbird up the road, follow the company. You know, if there's, you know, if there's a, a Shamrock going this direction and a Speedbird going that direction and you're a Speedbird, follow the company Follow your company. Don't follow Shamrock, right? That's what they mean. Changes from ATC. Uh, just like that, you can cancel a SID. They might give you a different altitude. They might give you a stop climb. Um, they, they could throw something into the works. You just deal with it. You write it down. 
You write it down, you take a breath and you try and figure out what's happening. If you're unsure, genuinely caught out, there's no reason why you can't ask them to say again. Or if you need to, drop them a message using vPilot to say, hey, what, what exactly do you want me to do? I'm a little bit lost here. All right. Right, pre-planning and expectation management. That, again, it's just listening. Now, aircraft separation and spacing. This was something that we came up against last week. Again, if it's a Unicom uh, situation flying into a control zone, there's very little we can do about it, uh, especially depending on the height or level of ATC coverage that we have. However, as pilots, as pilots, well, we need to be looking around and keeping our distance from other aircraft. Now, there are various rules in various countries. If I look at the I uh, Irish Aviation Authority, for example, there are rules here uh, when we want to keep uh, a certain distance away, right? And all this stuff, this is real world stuff. Um, scroll down here, S separation standards. You know, how close can they go? So it says here, in Ireland, aircraft flying in controlled airspace up to 66 should not come closer than a thousand feet vertically to another aircraft unless they are appropriately separated horizontally. So there's different rules and VATSIM has their own controls as well. Um, but the idea here is, lads, it's up to us to maintain that we're keeping a distance. If you're in a very fast moving aircraft and all of a sudden you're approaching on a very slow moving aircraft, yeah, well, make sure there's sufficient distance between you. Sufficient, right? So if you're on Unicom, you want to be on the blower the whole time, talk to Unicom. You know, I'm in such an aircraft, this is where I'm heading, this is my speed. Give other people around you an idea of what's happening. Then you can get into your planning. So you know, if, you, if you're at Cork, for example, and you know, you're in an A320, and you're sitting there and you're just watching a Cessna 172 take off, well, plan for that. You're going to pass him very quickly. Do you know what I mean? That's the idea behind that. How to manage your distance uh, from others. So maintaining situation awareness. You can also use uh, the standard separation procedures and techniques. But you can also use some of the other things like ADSB if you have it on the aircraft, depending on the aircraft, uh, you have an idea. Uh, and you can also put in, um, again, you can look at Simaware or VAC glasses. They update fairly quickly, fairly quickly. They'll give you a bit of information of what's happening. Do you know? Uh, Unicom is one place where you can be a chatterbox. Not necessarily, yeah, but not as in, ah, look, how are you? How's Mary? You're looking well. Do you know? It's, it's relevant information only. All right. Uh, maintaining a good flow. And then we have a, some additional points in here as well. Have a read over them, right? All this stuff I put in here this evening onto this. Use this. Read this back in your own time. Um, do you know what I mean? Because, like, this will just... Ah, yeah. Right. We got you. The seed has been planted. All right? Also, VATSIM. At this stage, we should all be signed up and members on VATSIM. Spend some time in the VATSIM Learning Center. Specifically, the VATSIM... Uh, uh, pilot clients, vPilot. How do you make it work? How does it, you know, all the sort of stuff. vPilot is probably the best one. That's what I use. And it's, it's just simple. It works. And um, what else do we have here? The uh, call signs. Again, this is revision. We have this in the course already. But uh, how do you pick your call signs? And how do you avoid using the wrong call signs? And so on and so forth. All right. And how do you read out your call signs? You know? If you're stepping away, I personally don't say it on Unicom because the chances of something uh, caring is very low. Yeah. If you're stepping away on Unicom, you're on Unicom, universal uh, communication. But like, if you're flying into an area that you know you need to say, oh, hey, I'm doing something now, you're going to be on. Um, so have a look there when it comes to your call signs. There's other call signs uh, that can be picked, but usually they're reserved. So the likes of military and other special call signs, uh, VATSIM, their code of conduct, they kind of push you towards uh, keeping things on the civilian side unless you're in a special uh, organization, a VATSIM special organization. And if you want to know more about them, that's effectively it's under your virtual airlines. That's where you get them. All right. Uh, if an airport or airspace is currently controlled on VATSIM, again, we've shown you two good examples, three good examples here now tonight. There's more information there if you need it. And um, the Learning Center Rules of the Air. Have a read of this one. This is important. This is on uh, section 139. Have a read over this. Head on, overtaking, converging, and converging. Like, these are giving you ideas of, well, who has the right of way? Again, we have the information in this course document, but just have a look here now. Uh, I read today, Virgin Call Sign is blocked by Microsoft in the default ATC. Jesus. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, what else do we have here now? Runway selection, landing and departing. How do we know? Well, ATC are going to tell us what happens if ATC aren't on aren't online. We'll go with the METAR. And you can check out Flight Aware uh, or Flight Radar. Flight Radar 24. That was a great, uh, great idea to find it there. Yeah. Now, the beginner's guide to ATC communications. Similar to what we're doing here, but uh, Robert did a great job. We've we've often uh, done a raid over to Slant Alpha. Uh, and Robert, he's so knowledgeable when it comes to ATC. Uh, and he has information here on the VATSIM website. Go in and have a listen to. There's certain things, like when we say, you know, keep information concise and clear. If we were to get, you know, a communication from ATC saying, caution, other traffic is a helicopter 6,000 feet at your one o'clock. You know, you'd want to be saying, Ah, yeah, I can kind of see him there now. Bajani, that, you know, right. You know, you know, keep it concise. Have insight. Don't have looking or negative contact. You get the idea, all right? Uh, other things we have then, it comes down to airport operations. This is handy. It's more geared, I think, towards um, FAA standards. But, but there's an important element in here, which I think is handy. Um, outbound, inbound, and practice approach. When to talk? When do we communicate or broadcast when do we actually start talking if you're on unicom or to unicom or if there's no tower so on and so forth this is when you start talking to folks on vatsim this is very handy and this is on the vatsim website have a look at that this is section 97 have a look at this right this is it's just super handy right uh now then we have guide to aircraft operations don't worry about that now moving on and we're nearly there your controls now your controls is a freeware bit of software uh, that it allows you and your mate or a buddy or a number of people connect your simulators together, meaning that you can operate out of the one aircraft. Now, some of the caveats. This is only for Microsoft Flight Simulator and it's only for the PC version. Xbox pilots, not me can do at the moment until the sim do a stuff, right? So, your controls. All the information is here. The aircraft in which it supports, it's all here. You download it, it drops something into your community folder, and then you're, you know, when you launch the program, you have this interface. You can join or you can host. You select your aircraft, you put in your username, and a connection timeout, it depends on you know, how many seconds before a connection is dropped from inactivity if you're experiencing random disconnects. All right. Uh, instructor mode or streamer mode. So you have a lot of options with this. All right. So this is your controls. If you want to fly on VATSIM with your controls, when you go to plan your flight plan, the pilot who is going to be connected as the main pilot, um, you know, as in, sorry, the main pilot who's looking after direct communications with VATSIM, right? Say, for example, if your uh, call sign is FFA-235, Firefly-235, well, you're going to register your flight as FFA-235. If you're going to be the pilot flying, but not handling, handling the radios. You're not looking after the radios. Put in the same call sign, but accompany it with an A, or a B, or a C, or how many people are connecting. Put an A after the call sign, because if you try and log onto VATSIM with the same call sign, it'll say, no, no, it's not going to work, because someone else has just joined us. So you put in an A, or a B, or a C, that sort of stuff, all right? Um, so that's that's... This, your controls. This is so, so handy. So what I'm going to do now, lads, uh, as the fella said, here's one we did earlier. I want to show you this. This is uh, this is myself and Gibbo using your controls in a shared cockpit environment. And uh, well, you'll get an idea of how the thing works. And you're also going to hear some ATC coverage of how the whole thing worked as well. So let's see if it all works and hopefully it does. So you join us here. We're going to be doing a flight in the Fly-By-Wire 32NX and uh, we're using a shared cockpit and we have Gibbo. How are you, Gibbo? What's going on, my dude? Come here. We were only here in the real world. It's very strange looking at it, isn't it? It's about time they let us in a plane. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, this, there's nothing, nothing to worry about here at all. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're connected to VATSIM and uh, using this shared cockpit with your controls, uh, because Gibbo's going to look after the radios, he's filed the plan, he's logged everything on, and he has full control of the radios, and I'm just looking after the aircraft. So I, it's my job not to hit that pothole like I did the other day. It'll be grand. 
So uh, <laughs> it's it's quite blustery here in Dublin. Uh, we're expecting a 10 right departure. Uh, and there's a bit of traffic here as well as we have a quick look around. There's plenty of Ryanairs, a couple of Shamrocks here as well. And our plan is it's a flight direct down to Shannon. So if we look at our Navigraph, well, it's going to show us what the route looks like. And this is pretty much what way the flight plan is going to work. So we don't have a SID out of Dublin because of the runway. So, we, you know, you have a choice. We can pick a SID that will bring us way down the south. So our plan is when we take off, we're expecting to be vectored meaning that ATC are going to give us some sort of a direction, uh, speed, heading, altitude, all that jazz. And then our first waypoint is Peleg, then it's Deegan, and then it's going to be on the Deegan 2 Echo arrival for a ILS approach for runway 16 at Shannon, or at least that's the plan. So that's what we're anticipating. Uh, if we zoom into Dublin Airport, where we're located, and stand 318 left, uh, and, well, this is where we do a bit of homework. So if we're departing from 10 right, we can kind of see the line. We're going to be taxiing up and along now i think alpha and echo some of them are closed we were listening to the uh we were listening to the atis and also checking the notums so we'll probably get link two turn right onto foxtrot and then probably you know link four whiskey two and then onto the sierras so that's what we're half planning but what we can do of course we can listen in to atc now speaking of atc it is shannon control that's online at the moment on vatsim meaning um that there's no other kind of tower controllers so if we have a look here at simaware well, we can see now uh, Ireland is lit up and we have Shannon Control Online 134.260. So using VATSIM's top down, we're looking at a controller at pretty much the highest level. So this guy's going to be looking after everything below control. So that's going to be control, approach, tower and ground. So uh, this this should be fun. So we do have some frequency changes. So, um, you know, we have Dublin ATIS, which is great. And uh, we can see that we have Shannon ATIS as well. So we'd be tuning in different radio frequencies uh, just to make sure we're getting the uh, the correct ATIS. So we are expecting an ILS runway 06. And in Dublin, we are expecting a 10 right departure. So uh, transition, we can already see it's going to be 7,000 feet uh, or flight level 70. And uh, it should be a bit of crack. So, um. But with that said, Gibbo, I suppose I'm going to get the aircraft into some sort of a state that we can say, yeah, we can go flying. And uh, mm -hmm. whenever you're yeah, ready. Yeah, when you're you ready, can... then I'll, I'll look for clearance. I mean, it's worth just calling out, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the fact that um, this is shared cockpit, right? So I'll be able to see everything you're doing, but we're not going to operate it in a normal Captain FO uh, type manner, right? You're going to be fully doing everything as far as flying the plane. I'll just simply be be manning the radios. Um, so... We won't be splitting tasks like you'd expect, um, but uh, we'll 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 get to that eventually. Get, but for now, I think we'll just keep the uh, the delineation of duties um, separate, just to make it easy. It's a great tool as well because I mean we could absolutely treat this as the two of us are flying the aircraft. You know, pilot flying, pilot not flying, and uh, like and you can control various systems. I mean, you know, you got the throttle, you got the gear, flaps. I mean, they're all there. Not to mention you can control the aircraft itself. Like if I were to say, Gibbo, you wouldn't do us an L favor there. Would you mind terribly uh, turning on the seatbelt and no smoking signs? And I'm not anywhere near that panel. So you can see that they've just moved and that's Gibbo moving them himself. So it's a great bit of software. It's freeware and it works on the PC. So it does the job. But, um, but from a VATSIM point of view, and we'll get into this maybe during the cruise, right? But from a VATSIM point of view, in terms of why you might want to use shared cockpit, it is just fantastic to know that there's somebody that's got your back, oh, yeah. right? So as you said, Murph, like I can I can fly the plane if I need to, but you can talk to radios if you need to. I mean, it's great to have that second person there, not only to cover you if you need, need be, but also to validate things and, you know, what was the squawk and... Uh, what not uh, or should I be doing this so it's just a great confidence booster to be able to to have somebody literally in the seat beside you flying the same flight um to to give a dig out so it's 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 a phenomenal learning tool in that respect that would so be me I'd be like what did he say where do we go <laughs> so yeah it's, it's, it's a huge uh it's, it's a huge advantage to have you know so yeah. um Right, okay, well, let's get cracking so I'm gonna get all our systems set up uh I'm, I have um some ATC audio here so we're tuned into now what we'll do before you know we, we really get into this what i'm going to ask you guys to do as we're watching this and as you're seeing this demonstration happen right um if you can i want you to try and spot mistakes or is there something better we could have done based on the information we've learned so far write down one or two notes and we can share these later on is to figure out hey 
did the guys do something they shouldn't have? Or was there a better way to do something um, that could have made life a little bit easier? And also listen out to the other traffic. What are the other aircraft doing? And maybe you might hear some people struggle um, and, and, you know, try and figure out why are they struggling? Why is this the case? And uh, as I said, it's it's you're going to see this thing in, in full motion as it's happening. But do have a listen uh, and, and watch just to see how the whole thing kind of works together. Do you know? So uh, I'm still here, by the way. I'll be stopping this and we'll have a chat now in a few minutes. Dublin at the moment. So I'll bring that up. So uh, right, you know, nine Fox away Romeo identified two directed both from time flight level 270. Yep, yeah, sounds good. Will do. And I'll play it by ear. Sounds good. So as you said, Murph, we have um, Shannon Control on uh, on COM1 and then on standby we have ADIS. So we're just going to jump over to ADIS just to listen in. Mm -hmm. I believe it's uh, Information Charlie, but we'll just uh, double check that. Taxiway Alpha and Taxiway Echo 2 closed. Advise if unable landing runway 10 left. 1090 at 1 2 knots. Visibility 10 kilometers or more. Few clouds at 1,800, 3,000 scattered. Temperature 12, 2.8. QNH 993 hectopascals. Advise on initial contact. You have listened to information. Charlie. Okay, Charlie's still current. Dublin International Airport 8 is information. Charlie recorded at 1330. Expect ILS. Landing runway 10 left. Now, as Gibbo is listening here to the ATIS, what I'm currently doing, I'm able to get the aircraft configured. You see me here with the MACDO, I'm putting in all my flight plan details. Gibbo's focusing on the radios. I'm also listening in. That second pair of ears, you know, and a, a potential brain, right? We're helping each other okay, out. I think we're good. So, yeah, Murph, the winds, you're talking about 09, 09 or 0, 12 knots are the winds. Okay, dope. Uh, Q and H, you've got tuned in. Zero nine or nine or four, or zero zero nine or three, yeah. actually. I'll just tweak that. Ooh, somebody's getting in trouble. Uh oh. So there's someone else on the frequency. They're after missing their. Uh, Which their, can happen, right? So taxi point. saying, listen, look, we're getting. Uh, there's, there's a dude on and he's blocking other people talking. I mean, it can happen, right? Yeah, and it is, it's a great tip. And we'll throw in tips, I think, throughout this flight as well that we've picked up along the way, right? So take your time. Wait for that, you know, second or two of a break. Mm -hmm. Also recognize the fact that folks will need to read back and respond. So give them the chance to read back and respond uh, before you might uh, try and contact the ATC. Mm -hmm. Particularly, you know, this controller who's manning half, the, well, three quarters of the country mm -hmm. uh, by himself, you know. So <laughs> he's going to be a busy man today. Shannon Control, Lufthansa Cargo 83521, final 10 left, confirm clear to land. Lufthansa Cargo 8352, runway 10 left, clear to land. So, you happy enough with the initial call, Gibbo? Yeah, I'm just going to wait for a break and then we'll look for clearance. That's okay, so we are going to be Firefly 235, stand 318, Lima, or left. Clear for takeoff on zero right surface zero nine zero seven. Clear takeoff on zero right, sorry about that. Rhino three seven double whiskey. Speedbird eight foot out the mic, cleared. Uh disappeared. Rhino one Papa Charlie climb to flight level three five zero, clear direct to Banba. One five zero direct to Banba, uh one one Papa Charlie. Reiner, Niner, Fox, Romeo, climb, flight level 350. Uh, actually, can I change flight level to 280 if possible? If not, I'm going to climb 350, uh, Reiner, Niner, Fox, Road, Romeo. Uh, and, yeah, climb flight level 280. So there's a great example straight away, right? Tower, or in this case, control, they've issued a, an instruction to another aircraft, and the pilot is coming back saying, Hey, is there any chance? Can I get this instead? And depending on what's happening in, in, you know, in the airspace, but the controller will either say yes or no. I mean, there's, there's no skin off his nose. But just to be aware, that's the sort of chatter you'd be listening into for whatever reason. It could be weather, right? It could be, you know, his expected fuel burn, 
whatever. It's it's you have these options to do. All right. Two eight zero uh, Ryan nine twelve Roma. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, I'm on a 960 off of a stand, 111 Lima, Southern Australia. Clear, please. Steve Lamberg, one. Clear, side PDC. Good. Uber date, put out the mic, descent 70. Descent, not descent. Now, that one there, right, you just heard clearance via PDC or clearance via PDC. Does anyone know what that means? Has anyone heard that before? Your clearance is via PDC. Now, I think if you fly stateside, if you're in the United States, you're going to know what that is because it happens there a lot. But to us, clearance via PDC, huh? what does that mean? So that's a conditional clearance. We've spoken about these before already. A conditional clearance. So it's not your normal clearance. It's called a pre-departure clearance, right? So um, when was it regarding the traffic density? Well, it depends. If it's very, very busy, I'll explain. If they say clearance via PDC, that means the controller will issue you with your clearance in text format and it'll go through your vPilot client, your, your, your Vatsim client, if you like, right? And basically, it'll come up by text, you know, cleared to Shannon. It'll show your route or show you your departure, your initial or stop climb, as in stop climbing at this altitude, right? Uh, it'll also give you a squawk and there's no need to read that back. You don't need to call it back. You don't, you don't text back. You don't need to read it back. They'll usually end that sentence with, uh, call me when ready for push and start. So if you ever get that, it means they're going to give you your clearance by text via your PDC or your pre-departure clearance. And that's going to go into your vPilot app. Fair enough? Right. Control, we are clear to land. Uh, negative traffic rolling. Landing Shannon Control, good afternoon. Firefly 235, stand 318 left. Is an Airbus A320 requesting for clearance to Shannon with information, Charlie. Call you back, break. Portugal 267 Alpha, clear to land on runway 10 right. Clear to land uh, 10 right, sir. Portugal 67 Alpha, thanks. Now, this is important because ATC uh, jumped at us because Gibbo looked for our clearance and he said, I'll call you back, break. Now, what he means by break, he's breaking the line of communication between them and you at this moment. So they're no longer talking to you. That's why they say break. They're breaking that conversation and they're moving on to someone else. Right? That's what they're doing. So in case you ever hear that, you know, break, they're moving on to someone else. Do you know what I mean? So that's what they mean by that. Just into cargo eight three five two taxi fox right outer Mike one hold short of runway one six initially. So Santa cargo eight three five two fox right outer Mike one and then hold. Can you repeat the last part for Santa cargo eight three five two? Now hold short of runway one six. And hold of runway one six Santa cargo eight three five two. Shamrock one uh, Yankee Echo request taxi. Shamrock one Yankee Echo taxi apron four hotel one hold short of runway three four. Apron 4, Hotel 1, hold short uh, 3, 4, Shamrock 1, yeah, yeah, here you go. Shannon is low, we're on a 983 November and warm nine with Charlie, 737-800, clearance to Edinburgh, please. Ryanair 983, November, Roger. Ryanair 37, Papa Whiskey, 3,000 feet. Ryanair 37, Papa Whiskey, identify, climb 1, restricted to fly level 210. I'm restricted to 210, we're on a uh, 37 Papa Whiskey. For Firefly 235, hello, cleared to Shannon via Pelig. After departure, track extended centre line, climb flight level 90, squawk 6602. Cleared to Shannon via Pelig, uh, after departure, track extended centre line, flight level 90, and squawk 6602, Firefly 235. Firefly 235, correct. France delay 73, X-ray Charlie, 10 right, clear for takeoff. Right, Mark, you get that 6602 in the squawk, I'll set that now. Yeah, dude, it's busy. <laughs> it is, huh? It is Poor busy. Job. But uh, we're good, we're good. Okay, so we got our clearance, so we know what we're doing. After takeoff, we're going to be tracking the extended runway center. So they're basically saying just fly runway heading, and we have a stop climb of flight level 9 or 0 or 9,000 feet. So that's uh, our restriction until we get something else, which is grand. Um, 
Yeah, it's, it's... Now, just in terms of the shared cockpitness, <laughs> I'm just noticing the FMC for me is not um, set. So I might... It looks like my FMC and your FMC do not talk to each other, or... Um... Yeah, I think so. And you might get the odd alert as well. Um, but don't yeah, worry, I've, so... I've eyes on. We'll be grand. If you hear anything, uh, just... It's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what could go wrong? You right? Know? Do you know what I mean? If only your man knew how much to you know, like... Yeah, it'll be grand, like... <laughs> You sound a total pro there now, looking for the clearance, but like, really, we're just a pack of idiots. <laughs> yeah, we don't have a rashers. <laughs> Not at all. It's grand, though. It's totally fine. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, right. I'm looking down at the little squawk box there. So just make sure then we're on standby and standby. So if you want to turn it on and then TA. All right. TA and we're on. We'll go for on rather than auto. Sweet. Okay, so current. so another another little tip, Murph, just hmm. for folks, is that particularly as you're starting off, um, it is very smart to choose a stand that's close to your departing runway, isn't it? Absolutely. For the simple reason that the closer that you are, the less that can go wrong, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the less of taxi instructions you're going to get. Now with that said, we still have to cross a runway, so we're gonna we're gonna get a couple. What I expect actually in in the taxi instructions in a moment is that the, he will give us. Um, taxi instructions to the runway and then um that we need to cross and then further instructions after that so um we'll see how it goes i suppose but yeah that's a good little tip is, uh, is choose to stand close to where you're departing from a hundred percent a hundred percent so let me see um so from my mac do everything's set up i think we're good to go performance uh initialization everything's pretty much good to go uh, ap was running i'll disconnect us from the ground power and we can remove that divil now as well uh, let's have a look. Can I get back to that service? Pausing, pushback. All right, okay. Uh, services, fuel, payload, and pushback. So it says the tug is connected, so that's okay. So our tug should be connected. Yes, he's trying to find his way. So uh, whenever you're ready, I think we're good for an old uh, push and start. Okay. Do you want to set heading to... Um, uh, we can do heading, yes. One zero zero. So just to clarify here, when they say um, track extended runway line, so I saw a few questions coming up in the chat. So you don't say, you know, um, runway heading because you have to aim off for wind. So you'll see here, looking at the charts, you'll actually see the uh, the degree you're supposed to be following, right? And then I'm aiming off based on wind as well, right? So you want to be tracking it as opposed to fly the runway heading. The runway heading doesn't change, but when you say tracking it, it just means you're allowing for, you know, oh, I'm on the right heading. you got to track it. Make sure that you're on a straight out maneuver from it. We stay on that until told otherwise. So if our instruction is track the extended runway line, okay, so extend the runway line. We need to track that. We're going to stay tracking that until ATC give us a shout. Now, if we're sitting there for 25 minutes and we're suddenly over, you know, Liverpool, well, at that stage, did you forget us? Right? You get the idea. We hope. I think it's 9-8, but yeah, no, we're good. Okay. 7-3-X, Charlie, identify, climb one, restricted to fly level 230. Climb one, restricted to fly level 230. Sorry, 7-3-X, Charlie, thank you. Okay, Shamrock 1, Yankee Echo, cross 3-4, Whiskey 1, Sierra, hold short of runway 1-0, right? Hmm. Uh, cross 3-4, Whiskey 1, Sierra, hold short of uh, 1-0, right? Shamrock uh, 1, Yankee Echo. Shannon Control, Firefly 235, stand 318, left, requesting push and start. Firefly 235, QNH 993, push and start approved. QNH 993, push and start approved, Firefly 235. Nice, cool, good stuff. All right. Uh, All right time to get moving, so I'll uh, keep the radios down and uh, my little pushback fella should be doing the stuff. So let me see. So we're going to say we want to go backwards, brakes off, we're moving. And we'll go for an engine startup. So, ignition and right engine are number two. Standby, brakes, November 5, 7, 16. Mike, your instruction is to hold short of whiskey tree. Someone else in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, as long as it's someone else and not us. <laughs> yeah, I know. It makes a change, huh? <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, I love the Neo, the dog barking. It sounds so good. PTUs. Awesome. So, it sounds so good. You got your anti ice on on the wing, isn't you okay with that? I don't know why that came on. That came on the last time. Yeah. Yeah, any mistakes we make? Oh, sure, that's your cockpit. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. That I laugh. You can't trust it. Like. <laughs> You'll never guess what it did next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was talking to ATC and got it wrong and everything. <laughs> hey, here's the dog barking. <laughs> And of course, what's super handy here, like the fact that you have that extra pair of eyes, ears, and a mouth when needs be, it's uh, it removes a lot of the worry out of it, you know. Hundred percent, and and you know, there's, there's no doubt that adding ATC into the mix adds to your workload. Mm -hmm. So again, I know the benefit of this is that you can lean on somebody else to concentrate on that while you're trying to fly the plane. You know, it uh, makes it makes life easier. Absolutely. Hello there. Hey Camo, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. Uh, it'll probably do our push. Mark and break coming on. Hook released. Let me know when you're ready. Yeah. So what I'm doing here, again, I'm just going through my flows because uh, I'm the pilot flying. So all of this is me. So this is the fly-by-wire. It's incredible. It, and it's freeware. It's an incredible aircraft. Uh, there was a question there in relation to the Phoenix. We've, it works, right? But we found a couple of odd issues with the Phoenix. Uh, but it does work. But the fly-by-wire, it's it works a little bit better. Just the way the uh, your controls is coded. But uh, so far, so good. It's, it's behaving itself. Okay, good to go, mate. Okay. Frisky 3, Frisky 2, Sierra, I'll show a runway 1, see your right, everybody, all right. Shamrock 1, Yankee Echo, I'll be ready to go at the end. Shamrock 1, Yankee Echo, surface is... Hello there. Zero, 1, 3 knots, runway 1, zero right, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 1, zero right, Shamrock 1, Yankee Echo. France Alight 73XV, Charlie, London's closed, monitor Unicom, bye-bye. Now, before we go on, uh, we'll say hello and welcome into Etihad 46. Thank you for the follow. You'll notice here, lads, on the MCP here, I'm reducing the speed. And this is vital. I'll talk about this a little bit later on in this video. But by reducing your speed, we have constraints based on, uh, you know, your, your SIDs and stars. They're going to tell you, you know, below 10,000 feet, maximum speed, uh, 250 knots, right? But that's all grand. But it doesn't say, you know, how slow you can go within reason. 200 knots means I have time to react without getting overwhelmed as a pilot. It's a really handy tip to have, right? Really, really handy. Don't always go for maximum speed. Keep the speed back a little bit. Give yourself a little bit of room so you have time to process, it, be it an instruction or something needs to happen. Do you know what I mean? That's what you want to be just aware of that. Three, Nick, I'm from 47, 36, Charlie, uh, thanks for the control, have a good day. You too. Ryder, Niner, Foxtrot, Romeo, nothing further, monitor, Unicom, bye-bye. Nothing further, uh, Monik, uh, Unicom, I want you to do this eight, thank you very much, uh, happy to Ryder, Nine, Foxtrot, Romeo. 
Sonic Control, Control Firefly 235, request taxi 10 right. Firefly 235, taxi link 2, Foxtrot, hold short, link 4. Taxi link 2, Foxtrot, hold short, link 4, Firefly 235. All right, okay, all Murph, right. you've got a little trick, don't you? you use your uh, your little your little annotation. So, to show us this before we get moving, mm. if we go into our ground chart here at Dublin Airport, so he's just given us a taxi clearance to the following uh, neck of the woods. So we'll do one of these, one of them. So we're here. We're going to go link two, Foxtrot, and we're going to hold short link four. That's what we're doing. So uh, yeah, this should be great. Famous that makes last life words. a lot easier, doesn't it? It just does. It's a huge difference. <laughs> All right, let's have a look here. So, taxi light coming on. And I think we're good. So, parking brake coming off. Small bit of power coming in. And uh, let's start moving. Takeoff speed's not inserted. You're happy with that, right? Uh, Takeoff speed, I have 200. Okay. So there's that release point Mike we just heard there in the background. Um, that's the guy here on our left hand mm. side. So because you're taxiing at the moment, I'm able to look at the charts and forecast where he's going to have his taxi next. So I'm expecting Hotel 1, Cross, Runway 3-4. Then whiskey one, whiskey Tom two. Gold see big switch, good so buddy. Let's see if I'm right. Cool. Ian Fisher, you're very welcome aboard. Thank you for the raid. Uh, so to answer the question there from Drummy, he's asking, uh, so the primary view of Gibbo, Gibbo's sitting in the right seat. Virtually, yes. So Gibbo's view is actually in the right seat for all of this. So he's, everything that's happening in front of my screen, it's happening exactly the same on Gibbo's screen, except for one or two very, very small nuances and that nuance could be there's something on the ncp or there's something in the mac do that hasn't fully copied over yet but don't worry about that the pilot flying they have the controls they know what they're doing gibbo can still jump on there is a setting here inside of your controls and it'll tell you who's connected to you and what their uh what their role is similar to what we have on vatsim are you an observer or you can say, give control to a user. So I could say, give control to Gibbo, and then his aircraft is now the active one. Does that make sense? Yeah, the mac -Do is the name of the flight computer, or the flight management computer for Airbus. It's still an FMC, they just called it a mac -Do. Airbus like to be different. Uh, but that's, that's all it is. The MCU, yeah. MCDU, yeah. But an FMS has an MCDU in it. It's a part of the of the of the flight management uh, system or flight management computer. That's all it is. All right. So you get the idea. So you can actually hand in real time hand over control of the aircraft if you wish to someone else. It's very very cool. Right. Very cool. Right. We continue on. Oh, it could be Mike. I think they have hotel closed. I could be wrong though. Yeah, Mike is the one after that. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, fair play to it. He's got a lot of work. God love him. He does, yeah. Yeah, he's doing a great job. So this bit of software, that's Gibbo's position there. Look, we'll go back work. to this for a second. He does, yeah. yeah so, he's doing a great job. So this is my view as we're flying along, right? And uh, this is just a taxi. And this is what Gibbo sees. That's his side. And you can just do that manually. You just move yourself into the other seat, save it as a quick spot position, and you experience the flight from that seat. The same could be said if you're flying a different aircraft, you know, if you're in something general aviation, uh, you know, you can have a pilot in the front, co-pilot, and even put someone in the back, and that's their position if you wish. You can do all these things, right? But uh, this is all free. Everything you're seeing here, except for the scenery, this is free. The aircraft is free, and how we connect using your controls, that bit of software is free as well. Really, really good. Controllers are getting used to saying Firefly, aren't they? They are. This is a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud. <laughs> I'm 
Pressure proof face south on Fox Trot Inner, QNH 9903, Rhino 983 November. Firefly 235, Taxi Hotel 1, Cross, Runway 34, Whiskey 1, Sierra, hold short of Runway 10 right. Taxi Hotel 1, Cross, Runway 34, Whiskey 1, Sierra, hold short of Runway 10 right, Firefly 235. Shamrock One Yankee Echo report passing out. I was right, Murph. Hotel yep. One, baby. You were so right. Seven, nine, 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 eight, echo. As this left, straight all the way to Sierra. Sweet. So what happens next? Uh, I actually turn on my landing lights. That's it. I have it, but the strobes go on as well. Now, again, an advantage of having two people flying in one aircraft. Gibbo is he's listening in and he's able to predict what may or may not happen. It just means it it loosens the workload completely. It becomes very very easy uh, to anticipate what's going to happen next. Do you know? Hey, Durka Durka is here. Good to see you. Uh, it's also important uh, or important to note that um, we could uh, we could get planned uh, holding points, planned holding points. So, Shannon, for example, holding point Alpha, and you'll see it on the chart. Oh, there's Alpha. It's a holding point. In Dublin, they have a couple of different ones. They have Pluto, I think Neptune, Venus. Again, they're holding points. They're designated areas that ATC will give you what's called a taxiway limit or a taxi limitation or a clearance limit, it might be known as as well. Basically, it's the furthest limit you can go before you got to stop and then they'll talk you on. We know the controller's on the ball, even though he's so busy, and he is proper busy. Don't forget, he's looking after all control, right? He knew where we were. Again, that comes down to the etiquette of me not taxiing too fast or too slow. So he's able to monitor us and say, ah, these lads, rather than stopping them, well, these lads are approaching where I need them to get. There's no other traffic in their area. I'm going to give them their information now. Rather than me having to hold short at link four, he called us up just prior to that. Do you know what I mean? So it's 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 you'll hear it you'll hear it said in many, many places and many times, stay ahead of the aircraft stay ahead of, in our case, of ATC to a degree. You're expecting or you're preparing for what might happen. Do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it's uh, that's, that's kind of what we do. Also, there is a point to note here as well, lads. With our virtual airline, Firefly Air, right? And this is just this is just me talking to you. If you're going to be representing our virtual airline, I mean, we all adore Firefly Air, but just remember, if you're using that call sign, for which you are more than welcome, I encourage it, just remember you are representing our virtual airline to the world when you use it. So just take that on board, right? If you have an issue or, you know, you get in over your head or in hot water and, you know, frustration kicks in, just bear in mind you're, you're, you're representing all of us, all right? So just take that on board as well. But, uh, yeah, so our taxi clearance, we're, we're pretty much after getting it all the way now on up to Sierra. Really handy, right? Turn left heading 280. And my apologies, flight level 90 and land light 280, Shamrock uh, 1 Yankee Echo. Flight on 96, Sierra Papa request, actually. Looking left, Hello. looking right. Rider 966. You wouldn't know your look. Sierra Papa, taxi sales in November. <laughs> Fox, cross outer, mic one hold short of runway 16. It's actually Delta November, Fox, should have a mic one, also one six, and our nine six, yeah, up. November five seven six, Lima mic, runway one zero right, clear for takeoff, service in zero nine zero degrees at one. But it's gas, like, it's the importance of knowing your call oh, sign right. so well, because you need to detect it a mile off, right? I mean, you could be, you could be watching something, you could be talking to somebody else, so you got to kind of train yourself to start listening to uh, your own call sign. Absolutely. So even as you're talking, I'm. I'm list, trying to have active listing on ATC as well, just for our call sign if it comes up, you know. Yeah. So it is a skill. It takes time <laughs> to develop, yeah. Especially for you, it doesn't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I better mind that pothole I hit there yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 you're, you know, it's nothing new. It's your carbon on three wheels, huh? Oh, Now again, like we want to be helping out the controller, like we're doing as much kind of looking around us as well. Just in case, you know, someone decides to not do what they're supposed to do or go too far or do you know what I mean? You've all of these, so now his instruction was hold short runway uh one zero right. 
at Sierra. So we have a choice. We can do an intersection or we can go all the way down to Sierra 7. So let's see what he says. Okay. Hey, Murph, we were standing just to the right here yesterday. We were down over there, look. Yeah. Yeah. We need to put in some custom scenery now. A Skoda and a Tesla and two Regents. <laughs> King Air. Two Egypts with shades on in the rain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's for the glare. <laughs> now, again, lads, as we're taxiing here, it's all about speed. It's all about anticipating what may happen if next. You early, tell him we'll go Sierra 6. No worries. So as I'm taxiing, if they if they say, okay, you know, line up and wait, I know based on the configuration of the aircraft, its weight, uh, its its um takeoff um performance data, I know that Sierra six is sufficient. Sierra five, not so much. I need minimum Sierra six. So what I'm saying to Gibbo is, hey, if he tells us to line up and wait now, just tell him we're gonna do so at runway or at Sierra six, if that makes sense. Yeah. What was the transition? 7-5, is it? Uh, he didn't tell us one. He didn't tell us the transition level. Oh, uh, the ADIS will have that. Uh, the transition level was 7-0, correct. 7-0. Number five seven sixteen. Mike, to turn left, heading zero five zero degrees. Climb flight number one one zero. Left zero five zero degrees. Climb one one two. Number one million. Thank you. Runner nine eight three November. Ready for taxi. Runner nine eight three November. Taxi. Foxtrot Inner, Mike 1, hold short of runway 16. Foxtrot Inner, Mike 1, hold short 16, runway 983 November. Ryder 27, exit Charlie, taxi Foxtrot Inner, Mike 1, hold short of runway 16. Foxtrot Inner, Mike 1, hold short 16, runway 27, exit Charlie. So, Iceman, just to confirm, our taxi instruction was, hold, was uh, taxi to Sierra, hold short runway 10, right? So, Sierra 6 was only in case they asked us to go to Sierra 6. So we didn't miss it. We had a choice to say, hey, we can actually do an intersection departure. But for this, we just said, ah, we'll go down the whole way. The instruction was, hold short of the yeah, runway so. at uh, Sierra 6. So we're good. Or hold short of the runway at uh, 10 right on Sierra. So we're good. Shamrock 666. Oh. Shamrock 666, your taxi, Bravo 1, Bravo 2, cross runway 34. Auntie Sierra, hold short of Whiskey 1. Uh, taxi Bravo 1, Bravo 2, cross runway 3, 4. Now, as we're waiting uh, here, because sometimes you might have to wait a while, you don't want to be on his face saying, ah, I'm holding short, come on, I want to go. So again, bit of etiquette, bit of courteous. Um, we're just listening to what's going on around us. Like, we could be at this position saying, why hasn't he given us permission to get onto the runway? We don't know what's going on around the airfield, I mean, or in the immediate aerodrome location. So uh, we're just, we're waiting. We're just checking out some stuff before we go. November 5, 7, 6, Leo Mike, clear, direct to Isle of Man, Vior. So you'll notice I'm at the category Man, three Vior. hold short. The main hold short line is further on up there, right in front of me. But I'm, I'm doing this intentionally. I'm holding way back and then I'll start a gentle roll. When he's looking at a scope, he'll see movement again and then he'll give us a call, okay. so. Correction. Um. Firefly 235, surface done 090 at 13 knots, runway 108, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 10 right, Firefly 235. Ryanair 983, November, Three, cross, did. runway 34, Whiskey 2, T -A -R -A Sierra, hold short of runway 10 right. Plus 1 6, Whiskey 2, Sierra, hold short of runway 10 right, Ryanair 27, XO Charlie, cross runway 34, onto 
Whiskey 2, Sierra hold short of runway 10. Cross 3 4, Whiskey 2. Imagine Sierra if it crashed on takeoff, Gibbo. Do you know what? I'd laugh. I'd laugh and cry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so just to confirm, we are cleared for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, one zero. Let's go, power coming in. That's the rest on runway, speed alive. Far flight two three five three thousand for nine thousand. Firefly two three five identified. Turn right, direct to Digan. Climb to flight level one two zero. Turn, Turn right, direct Digan. Flight level one two zero. Far flight two three five. Rider four three eight Quebec East and two thousand feet cleared island approach runway one zero. Got that sack. Good job. Two thousand cleared out of one zero right on air force. Hell of a climb. Clear five seven to that four thousand feet Q and H nine nine three. Four thousand can H nine and nine and trees got up to five thousand. I have to say seven thousand, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're clear uh, to uh, one two zero. Uh, can't four, 34, I have a transition level quarter. seven zero, correct. Grand, we'll give him a bit of a wide berth here. Cat four, three, four, five, one, China control. Now, during this stage, again, you're seeing keep the speed down. I don't need to go full whack. Continuing our right turn, I'll just give him a bit of a wide berth though. So what they've told us, what we've been instructed to do, Digan, turning right all the way to Digan. That's the waypoint. We're heading east at the moment, so. Miles away. Big turn. Three, four, five, one. Virgin four zero nine six five four three one zero. Nice turn. Virgin Coming up ten thousand feet. Six Shannon Control. Good afternoon. Identified. Roger. Virgin four zero nine six. Good afternoon. Let's straighten up here just for a little bit, and then we'll start Rider turning again. Sierra Papa seven seven zero nine zero thirteen knots. Runway one zero eight. Turn for takeoff. One two zero. Courses are. Um, Cruise Shamrock, six, 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 yeah. you Continue taxi Sierra hold short to runway one zero right. Continue taxi and Sierra hold short runway one zero right. Uh, Shamrock six six six. Ryder nine six thousand hotel taxi Mike one cross runway three four whiskey two Sierra hold short to runway one zero right. Mike one cross three four whiskey two Sierra hold short one zero right. Ryder. All right, we're doing all right. Yeah, and I got the Aidus at Shannon on standby. Sweet. It's looking uh, at the moment very quiet there, which is good. Yeah. Shannon Control, good evening. Shamrock 2, Charlie, Juliet, fly level 2, 2, 4, descending fly level 1, 4, 0. So, for folks watching, the only thing that we're really missing here is changing the actual frequencies you know from ground to tower to approach to center and mm -hmm. then same on the shannon side so we're staying with this this guy connor the whole way um but the instructions that he's given us will be the same as if we were t talking to those those individual controllers exactly like the only other thing the controller would do they would tell you contact departure on such and such or contact approach on such and such um yeah but certainly for the moment like we will follow their instruction to the absolute degree so Speed wise, I could be going a lot faster, but I'm going to keep it nice and steady so I have time to react. Um, 
we filed for flight level 120 along the way. We're going to keep it there. We, we could ask him for an increase if you wanted. There's no real point. We're about 70 miles, give or take, away from, uh, from Deegan. And if we have a look now on Navigraph, and we'll start having a look at our approach. So we're currently over Baldonnel here at the moment. And it's going to take us over kind of... Pelig was our first waypoint, but we can bypass that. And then it's into Deegan. So let's have a look. If we bring up the approach chart. So we're going to look for an approach for an ILS on 06. I'm going to pin that. And if we have a look. Well, this is the information I'm going to have to put into my Mac do. So 109 or decimal 5 is going to be the localizer frequency. And our decision altitude is going to be 246. So we're good for the minute. Yeah. Yesterday I flew this exact route and it was a non standard departure just like here today again there was no SID. Um and the instruction I got was um a Peleg speed speed was my discretion. Oh nice. So um uh, that was Dublin uh Dublin control. Dublin control the whole way, yeah, nice. Yeah, rather than Shannon control, yeah. Okay, so let me see. 990 is giving me the weather at the moment, but that might change. Um, winds 8011. Yeah, 9990 is QNH Shannon. Uh, winds are 080 at 11. Runway 06. Transition level is 70. Uh, and um, information is Delta. Cool. We're looking good for our approach. beautiful on live weather isn't it it really is it's gorgeous here today i'm not sure about your neck of the woods but uh sun is shining you know need to get the sun factor on you know <laughs> i got a i actually got an ikea delivery today and it's a sunday of a bank holiday wow on easter sunday you got yeah. an ikea delivery wow it, nuts right someone's charging quadruple time <laughs> <laughs> i'm a very important customer give i mean you know mm -hmm. <laughs> How many screws did you have left over? Six. <laughs> Which usually they give you two or three. <laughs> oh dear. Grand. They, they always throw in extras. Yeah, it's fine. We didn't need it. <laughs> <laughs> now, in addition, obviously, we're listening to ATC. But in addition to that, we're doing a couple of things, right? So we're listening or we're watching on vPilot. Uh, but we also have this VSR as well, uh, which is another bit of a freeware program. So if there's any messages coming to us, We'll see them up on this. If there's any frequency changes needed, we'll see them up on this as well. Uh, and it'll list all the active frequencies at the moment. And we can just click on one of these and tune into it. Um, so we can see we have Dublin and Shannon for the ATIS. Distance, we're not terribly far from Shannon. Uh, and we get the weather here as well. So it's it, it, this is a great little add-on. VSR. I'm still learning it, but it's very, very good. Yeah, like the the summary as to what it, what it can do is that it'll give you the... Uh the frequencies along your entire route right there and right there in front of you so uh, you don't have to go scurrying off to loads of different places to get all the different frequencies they're all there um you can use it to tune your radios as well just by clicking on it and you can set com one and two both active and standby mm -hmm. um and uh what else could it do um oh yeah it can um it can sync with simbrief as well so your flight plan you just pop it in and uh it syncs and um, all pops up for you. So yeah, it's super, super handy. And you can use it on any screen as well. It doesn't have to be on a tablet. It can be on a second screen. It can be on a browser. It can be on a different computer. It's so good. Nice. So what we're saying there about VSR, it's another, um, it's another add-on you can grab, right? I will do a video on that soon. I might cover it on Wednesday. It's a super handy uh, at our start. bit of uh, software, right? Um, just in case anyone just joining us, this is a recording. The reason we recorded it uh, yesterday, was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. We had full coverage, but it means then that I haven't lost the interaction with you guys. If I was flying this live, I've got to concentrate on the flying, right? So the idea of this is showing you a demonstration of a flight in a shared cockpit environment. And uh, I'll, I invite anyone... Um, Listen and watch what we're doing. Listen to the communication and see if there's any mistakes. Can you spot an issue? Uh, one has happened already. Um, but yeah, it's uh, just have a look and a listen to what's going on. 
Uh, Rad Baron asking, why are we not flying with standard barometer, or why are we flying with standard barometer below 18,000 feet? It, that changes when you fly ICAO. Uh, it, when you're in Europe, we're under ICAO uh, regulations. So we would fly at the transition altitude or transition level. In this case, it was 7,000 feet. Once we get past 7,000 feet, it turns into flight level and we go on to the standard barrel. Uh, there is the transition altitude. Uh, we have two of them. They're not the same. In America, it's 18,000. That's it. In Europe, it's different. You'll get a transition altitude and a level. Uh, scroll up in the course document, you'll see what we mean by there as well. Uh, Sergeant Staff, it's great to see you. Um, but yeah, do have uh, do have a look at that VSR plugin. It goes directly into your sim. You can pop it up on the screen whenever you want. It's super, super handy. So, uh, so at Deegan, or Diggin, uh, it's, so we'll talk about the approach now and I'll, I'll skip on here now in a sec. Altitude needs to be above 8,000 feet. So we might give him a quick call. We might give him a DME maybe from uh, from digging if we need to if he's very busy it's always handy to do that but some of the restrictions we need to watch so our speed under 10,000 feet we have to be below 250 knots um at digging we need to be at uh 8,000 or above and then we get down to turdu that's 6,000 or above and then at l palm that's where we expect to capture the localizer and we would be at 3,000 feet for that and then that'll be bringing us straight in for the ils of 06 so yeah the other other small thing as well is because he's covering such a wide uh, area you mm -hmm. know that and a lot of his traffic today seems to be coming out of dublin we'll let him know where we're at as well so we'll repeat shannon you know rather than with a shannon controller they'll know what their field you're coming in exactly you know, so. exactly yeah but uh i i love these annotations from uh from navigraph they're absolutely brilliant So, so have you guys away, have you guys tried those annotations yet with Navigraph? Super, super handy. Um so all 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 we're doing now during the flight, we're we're cruising. We're cruising. So, you know, we've talked about our arrival. Uh, again, I'll jump back over the missed approach. If something were to go wrong for whatever reason, there's someone on the runway, or you know, we don't get a landing clearance, that's what we're planning for at this stage. We're relatively relaxed now. We're we're in our own airspace, we're just cruising along. There's nothing really to consider. There's no other traffic that's a factor for us to worry about. We are listening to the radios. We we haven't been handed uh, over to anyone else. We're staying with Shannon Control because, well, they're covering the entire region, right? The entire FIR. Um, and again, it's it's the idea here is we're trying to stay ahead of the aircraft. We're, you know, we're talking about altitudes. We're talking about descents, all this sort of stuff. Quite you know. um, low as well compared to what Simbrief wanted as well. So yeah, top of drop is going to be much further on. Echo arrival for runway 06. Clear Deegan, 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 Deegan to Echo arrival for runway 06 with Shannon, Firefly 235. Ryanair 1183. There you go. Okay, so we got a clearance. We didn't have to contact him. Yeah. Um, Roy Van Khan, good to see you, mate. You're very welcome in. So you just heard it there now. We didn't even have to talk to ATC. And we were planning, hey, if we haven't spoken to this guy before we get to Deegan, we're 30 miles out. We'll give him a quick shout just to remind him. But as busy as the airspace was yesterday, and this is this is of all the VAT air controllers, and I'm sure it's the same in the regions you guys fly, but the lads are tuned in. They know what's happening. Uh, and they appreciate, you know, hey, this is where I'm at. But like, you don't overdo it. The lads are highly skilled, highly capable, uh, and their objective is to make sure they get you from A to B uh, efficiently, safely, and that you have a good time. Uh, and, well, our responsibility as a pilot, make sure that we don't give them a headache. Let's do exactly what they're asking us to do uh, as, as you know, safely and as quickly as we can. So uh, it's, 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 it's pretty handy. Um, also, because this is a relatively short flight, you'll notice that our altitude isn't terribly high. I mean, it's, it's 12,000 feet, flight level 120. Nice, handy. Um, which means it gives us a lot of uh, it gives us a lot Hello of there. do you know what I mean? Uh, thank you for the follow, rendezvous, welcome in. Um, so you know we spoke about our arrival, we spoke about when we can start descending. The important note here is the important note here is we have only been given a clearance for approach. That doesn't mean we're allowed land. That doesn't mean we can now descend. We've just been given cleared. 
you know, for the ILS approach. That's all we got, nothing more. So this is where you need to hunker down and listen to what they're actually telling you. Because you could be flying here now thinking, Jesus, can I descend now? We weren't told to descend, yet we were given a clearance. You're cleared, you're cleared for the approach. You've got to be careful. Again, they're conditional clearances. You are cleared for the approach. What might they say? If we weren't cleared for the approach, what might they say, lads? What might they say? Any idea what they might say? We spoke about it earlier. We haven't fully done it yet in the course. We will be, but it's all about, you know, our spacing, separation and all this. Uh, flux, 100%. So Flux got it. We could have been told to go into a hold. OK, so a go around, not quite yet because we're not close enough to the airport. I mean, a go around is a last minute. Get out of there. But because we haven't um, we haven't got into the aerodrome yet, the only thing that could have been given to us was perhaps a hold. So an instruction could have been Firefly 235, enter a hold at Deegan. Oh, Jesus. Right. OK, we need to put ourselves into a hold. We will cover this on the course. It's just to be aware of it. But we've got our clearance for the ILS approach. We don't need to worry about the hold just yet. So everything, as far as we're concerned, Hello is there. tickety boo. It's tickety boo. Pilot kid, welcome in. Uh, the clears you to descent if cleared for the approach. It depends, Scott. It depends. Holding pattern. Yeah, that's the one. So we keep rambling on in and uh, altitude and all that jazz is fine. We, he didn't tell us we can descend yet. So uh, we're just cleared for the uh, we're just cleared for the ILS. Yeah. So there is one other bit of trap. Now it's important to note as well, we are miles away from even starting the approach. We haven't hit the waypoint that starts the approach. Hence we're saying we maintain our current altitude. Because we haven't actually, we haven't arrived at the first waypoint of the approach. Yeah. And by looking at the chart, if you were look, if you were looking at the chart, sorry, if you're looking at the chart for the ILS and runway 16, right? Uh, or even the star. So it's the digging two. Uh, let's have a look digging two. So this is where it starts. We're nowhere near this yet. And looking at it, um, it says here above flight level 80, above flight level 80. If there's any doubt, if you're unsure, if you just don't know, it's quite okay. Well, ask them, am I, or, you know, can I descend or, do you know what I mean? Or you can drop it into V pilot. Can I descend now? If you're unsure, again, it's only when you fly in the same regions quite a bit, you build up that level of experience. You're going to be like, ah, okay, sure, I'm, I'm usually okay to do this. I'll give them a shout. Just remember, keep the level uh, or lines of communication open. If you're not sure, just ask. That's, you know, just ask. But uh, once you start building up a bit of experience with the areas that you're flying in, the rest of it comes fairly straightforward. He's at Alpom, so he'll be turning on finals shortly. He's at 4,400 feet and he's coming from the UK, 738. That's it for Sean. So here's us and there's this other guy here. So again, we're using this map to give us an idea of what's going on ahead of us. We're not too concerned what's, with, what, what's going on behind us. We're having a look now to say, oh look, there's a Ryanair 737 in the vicinity and we can see here, you know, he's going to Shannon. Now, we're very, very far out. He's not really a factor for us, but we're aware of it, yeah? Um, you know, if, if you're looking at Dublin tonight, you'd see a whole line, a whole line of stuff. You know what I mean? So uh, that, that's what we're doing there. Can you even pronounce that Avila Sukarana <laughs> for Firefly Air? It's like, uh, hmm, I need to make a phone call and like reserve that IKO just for us. <laughs> Any departures coming out of here yet? No. Negative. The showers, few clouds. Yeah, we're not too bad. It's a busy day, man. There's a lot of traffic up there. Look at Dublin. Yeah, Dublin, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so a little bit of traffic. She's at 3,000 feet. He should be turning on final shortly. So he'll be, should be no factor. We'll keep an eye on him. Mm -hmm.
He should give us a descend after digging, I would imagine. Yeah. If he doesn't, we just give him a shout to say, uh, this is where we're at, request, or, you know, can we descend to maybe, I don't know, 6-0 or something like that. Okay. Again, it's harping on, right? The fact that you're in this shared cockpit environment, Myself and Gibbo, like, we're, we're kind of challenging each other. It's a huge advantage you know, just listening to ATC. Like, when you're in observer mode. We'll get back to him now in a minute. He sounds good, doesn't he? Uh, he sounds like he's a lovely fella. But what I'm saying is, the fact that you can talk to each other and kind of tease things out, you know, should we do this? Should we do that? Uh, it's very, very helpful. Really, really helpful. And what I would love to see, guys, if you can, over the next week or two, if you can jump onto your controls, buddy up, pick a buddy and say, hey, I'm going flying. Would anyone like to join me? right try and experience this because it is a lot of fun and uh you know if you pick a buddy and you'll figure out fairly quickly what works and what doesn't and what are the nuances are you know if you very slightly move your joystick or your throttle it might you know completely mess up the other guy you'll figure all that stuff out uh as we do it you know but uh certainly like if you're doing um if you're doing events epic phil says it there like if you're doing cross the pond for example and that's a mission like that's an objective we want to do using this shared cockpit environment on other simulators there are other um uh, you know uh what's the word i'm looking for like x-plane for example has incredible shared cockpit functionality with some of its add-ons but for microsoft flight sim this is very very good you know is it stable now Briggsy, it's fair it's fairly stable like we're approaching this as one pilot is flying the aircraft, managing all of its uh, systems, right? The other pilot is just looking after radio communications and keeping an eye on me. And I'm keeping an ear out for him. And that, that level of teamwork works very, very well. I mean, you can totally expand this. You can have the pilot not flying. Well, they call out the check items on your checklist and you go around, make sure everything's checked. They have a pair of eyes that can say, no, you missed that. You didn't do this or watch that. Do you know what I mean? Very, very helpful. Adam Control says, I put a message in the Discord ideas channel suggesting for a couple of voice channels for shared cockpit. Brilliant. And lads, like, brilliant, right? That's that's exactly what I want to see because whatever whatever idea of your capability is, whatever, however good or bad you think you are, once you start flying with someone else, the acceleration of you now learning things it's unbelievable. I mean, there's only so many YouTube tutorials you can watch and they are helpful. But when you have someone beside you virtually and they're able to help you along and you're helping each other along, lads, it's a game changer, a total game changer. Do you know what I mean? So brilliant. Um, and when you're listening to the calls, it's everything's quite repetitive, right? I mean, it's they're following the same spiel. It's the same kind of script. And uh, if you're just listening in as an observer, Fairly quick, you can start kind of preempting what they're going to say next. Thousand percent, man. Uh, you know, and, and giving yourself that extra time to actually just sit and listen, even if you're not an observer. If there's, hmm. that wasn't us. That's okay. Um, even if it's um, uh, somebody beside you and they get taxi instructions, you can watch and follow what they what they got and where they're going. And also the other thing as well that's huge is the drone cam. Mm -hmm. So particularly if you've got the scenery, which is always recommended. Absolutely. Um, you know, just to follow along the route before you actually start moving. Now, as we're still flying along here, just something else, right? So what we have available with our own infrastructure, right? We have the ability to have our own Europe, uh, our own ATC. And with that, that's thanks to Rambog, right? Uh, and Gibbo and at all the back end, meaning that we can track Xbox and PC pilots in a ATC environment. We have them on a radar scope. What we could do, uh, you can then buddy up Xbox pilots, you're, you're kind of on your own. We've no solution for you buddying up, right? But PC pilots can buddy up and fly on Discord using our network and we can staff up uh, our own frequencies. 
again, these are building blocks to get you very comfortable. Uh, we're anticipating we're going to be and competent when it comes to flying on Vatsim yourself because I can tell you, flying on Vatsim is a lot of fun and it, it, it's a great way to expand your hobby. Do you know what I mean? And then like it opens up doors perhaps in your flight simulation experience. You didn't know were there. Maybe you want to get involved with controlling. Maybe you want to staff up some ATC frequencies. Do you know what I mean? So you have all these options to look at as well. To descend, uh, speed is yeah, good at we'll the moment. Yeah, we get to Deegan and then I can obviously request descent. Yeah, he'll probably tell us, but either or, it's... 8,000 is fine out here, but we definitely want to drop a little bit before the uh, the next waypoint. Okay. Spirit 8 Echo, I'm going to be ready for push down to the two. Spirit 8 Echo, I'm going to push down to Q&H 993. So five Spirit miles out. You'll see me here. I'm dropping the speed. I'm five miles out. This is anticipating a descent. So I'm going to bring the speed back a little bit. Report passing altitude. Turn right to 180. Passing 3400. Rider 96 Delta Hotel, identify turn right, direct dig and climb flight level 220. Flight level 220, right, direct dig and Ryanair 96 Delta Hotel. Rider 27 Exit, Charlie, monitor Unicom, bye bye. Unicom, see ya. KLM 195, monitor Unicom, see ya. Unicom, thanks for yourself, bye bye, KLM 195. Shamrock 66 Victor, monitor Unicom, see ya. Monitor Unicom, Shamrock 66 Victor, thank you, bye. Shannon Control, Firefly 235, overhead Deacon 406 at Shannon, request descent. Firefly 235, descend flight level 70. Descend flight level 70, Firefly 235. Shannon Control. Okay, down to 7 we go. Yeah. Uh, and that other traffic is on short final, 1000 feet. Okay, that's it. Rider 9 or 7, GD5 attack D. So I see a question there from Black Eyes Gabe saying, Murph, do you need to be logged into VATSIM to listen to VATSIM? Yeah, but you would connect as a, uh, as an observer. You go into observer mode. Do you know what I never did? I never hit the chrono button. What a, a total fail. And I probably would have got uh, away with it. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of this comes back to your um, a lot of this comes back to your familiarity with the aircraft. You'll notice I have a lot of things set to manual. Make it bright again. So I'm trying to stay ahead of the aircraft. Lights are now coming on. We're approaching 10,000. Seatbelt signs. But instead of putting my speed to 250, I go to 240. Again, it's giving me that little bit of room to manoeuvre if I need it. Uh, Gabe says no more. Yes, Gabe, you need to be on Microsoft because it needs to connect to your sim. I'm 90% certain on that. You need to be in the sim to listen into that sim. So there's our traffic. Yeah. No factor in it. And we can listen ahead. He's getting uh, taxi clearance by the Deltas. Yeah. So there, we're listening to what's going on ahead of us. Remember that Ryanair 737? We're listening in now and he's getting his taxi instruction. So we already kind of know, hey, he's going to be taxiing by the Deltas. We now can start planning. Okay, well, we need to get off the runway uh, at Charlie to get onto the Delta Way taxiways. That's how we're planning ahead. And that's what we're listening into. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, we're trying to focus on what's happening next. Clear ILS approach for runway 10 left, uh, Shamrock to Charlie. I have the 10 right. Fly by wire is not so bad, Murph, sure it's not. No, dude, I mean, listen, we've, we've flown it now two or three times and it, it, it feels better and better each time you fly it. Yeah, really is. 
I mean, my first impressions from seeing what's coming from any bills in the in some update 15 is is between this and the Phoenix, um, and I can't wait. I can't wait to get my hands on. Thank you, clear. I let's approach runway one zero right, uh, Shamrock to Charlie Juliet. It's a very capable aircraft. I mean, like, there's a ton of functionality with it. Uh, 100% and it's free. Can it's free. It's free. Yeah. <laughs> what were they thinking? <laughs> Spider 9 or 7 Julia Papa cross runway 3 4 with you 2 Sierra hold short of runway 1 0 right. Hold cross runway 1 6 and Mike 1 with you 2 Sierra hold short. Man, look at that weather. Right, so right now, so wow. We're coming up to our transition level as well. Indeed. I'm gonna get the speed back here a little bit as well. Just to confirm, you got your ILS frequencies and all that in. Frequencies good to go. Okay. Okay, so we're coming up on all set. Good morning, good afternoon, Sherman. My name is Charlie Killer, requesting clearance to Cleveland with Delta Board. Sherman, good morning, Charlie Killer, expect PDC. Okay, Halton 7000. Um, speed is good. We're dropping down to about 200 and we're just at all set in about Shamrock two and a half Charlie, miles. Julia to stabilize. I left runway one Check. zero right. Shamrock 2, Charlie, Julia, clear to land on runway one zero right. Zero percent, zero nine zero one five knots. Clear to land one zero right. Shamrock to Charlie, Julia. Go. I love the way you go for medium auto brakes at Shannon. Like one of the longest <laughs> runways in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let me jinx it, man. It's like I always go medium. <laughs> How do you want your steak? Yeah. Medium. What what clothes do you want to wear? Medium. What clothes do you buy? <laughs> Shut up. Next question. <laughs> You're just hoping to to get off at Alpha, aren't you? Or no. Yeah, Charlie even. No, oh. uh, zero six, it's Alpha, yeah. Yeah. Alpha. <laughs> Oh dear. It'll happen someday. <laughs> <laughs> right, do we need to cross the center again or we wait for him? Uh we're okay at seven, like we only need to drop another thousand. Um but yeah, if we wait till we're kind of I've got a visual on the runway, so once we kinda of pass the runway, we'll uh, we'll give him an L. Okay. Reminder. Hey, make sure we're all set up. Good evening. Standbox 628 Hotel. Clearance. Lights are good. Spoilers armed. Shamrock. Six two eight. And we'll start dropping in some flaps in a little while. All right. Button that. Hello there. Again, it's, it's having the speed. Abba, welcome in. Relatively low, it's a huge advantage. Like, you don't want to be too slow to... So what we're doing here, this is a, a recording of what we flew yesterday. Uh, only because, well, to deliver kind of training, it, it's easier because I can focus on what you guys are saying here, right? Uh, so the fly-by-wire, this, uh, this is the stable release. Uh, that's what we're operating with because we're using your control. It's a shared cockpit. Uh, that's what we're doing. So at this stage of the flight, this is where things get very, very busy indeed. This, in fact, is the busiest part of a flight when you're with ATC because it's one thing getting your clearance and the aircraft is stationary. It's another thing on your departure following a SID. This is where things get very difficult and very busy. So little things that I'm doing, bringing the speed down, you know, I've, I've, I've complete uh, visibility on what's happening around me. I'm happy enough with the configuration of the aircraft and I have Gibbo manning the radios, so it seems to be working out quite well so far. Pray a headache for the controllers. Like, we're down here on our own, so there's no rush. Yeah, just slow things down a bit. 
because it gets hectic, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, trying to land. Whiskey one Sierra, hold short to runway one zero right. Empty hostel one, cross thirty four. Whiskey one Sierra, hold short one zero right. See about eight at the ribbon. Ryanair, eleven eighty three, in and out. Thanks for your help, bye. No problem, see ya. Okay, so we can see ILS 06 is already programmed in. Um, Bit of wind here at the moment, but we're going okay. 10 4 3 4 5 1 overhead pickle monitor Unicom radar service terminate. Bye bye. Unicom for 10 4 3 4 5 1 today. Unicom 10 4 3 4 5 1 for Unicom 10 4 3 4 5 1. Now you may have heard that signal degradation. That's now a feature with VATSIM. That pilot is miles away from us. That's why it's harder to hear them and understand them. That's why Unicom is so good. You can only barely pick them up. But, you know, Shannon Control, they've, they've, you know, they're staffed all the, all the airports. So, like, they can hear them perfectly. But from our position, uh, that's why it's quite difficult to hear them. It's awesome. Abum, thank you very much indeed. Welcome in. We could request a drop to 6,000 or flight level 60. Uh, we're 11 miles out at the moment, so once we get to 10, if he hasn't shouted us back, we'll just give him a quick heads up. Okay. So the waypoint is Turdu. So we can just say 10 miles Turdu, uh, request to send 6,000 or whatever, you know yourself. And all the while you're keeping an eye out for other traffic, you're listening on the uh, on the frequencies, you're making sure that you're very comfortable of what's happening in your surroundings. So this is how we're currently at. We actually have a Ryanair behind us, so someone coming in behind us, but he's a good bit back. He's only around kind of port Lee. Slider 9 or 7 GD Papa, step 7 0 9 0 1 5, runway 1, which is good. Shamrock, or Ryanair 9 7 GD Papa behind the arriving Air Lincoln 320, line of might, runway 1 0 right behind. Slide up right in the way we're in traffic, we're in a 97 Julie Papa. Okay, seven. Far away from Turdu now, Murph? Uh, seven. Shamrock 9, Charlie Kilo, push inside of Pooh, QNH 993. Push inside of Pooh, 993, Shamrock 9, Charlie Kilo. Speedbird 8X, push inside of Pooh, QNH 993. Uh, push inside of Pooh, uh, X ray, thank you. Shannon Control, Firefly 235, 6 nautical miles from Turdu, 406. Uh, Shannon, uh, request flight uh, 6000, please. Send 6000, please. Sky two, Firefly 235, 6000 is unavailable due to transition level. You can decent out to 3000 feet, QNH 990. Let's go. Send 3000 feet, QNH 990 for Firefly 235. Sweet. Good day, uh, all hands, 289 now, uh, 25780. Now, I, so we couldn't uh, reduce it to 6,000 because of transition level. Has anyone come across that before? So we asked for 6 and he said, I can't give you 6. Does anyone know why that might be? Now, to our American friends with FAA uh, procedures, this is going to be news to you, I'm sure. Uh, but for anyone flying in Europe, does anyone know why ATC can't actually give us 6,000 feet? Consider this. Transition altitude is 5,000 feet. Transition level is 7,000 feet. They're two different altitude restrictions, right? So if we want 6,000, that puts us in between both levels, both restricted levels, right? So have a think in it again, scroll up as to why we're not allowed to stay in that area of 6,000 feet. Flux, yeah, that's accurate. Transition barrel could be different to local barrel, giving you a different altitude. So depending, again, I don't know, is this just something in Ireland? Because uh, it, like, does airports in Europe that um, it, it, it could change from region to region what the transition altitude is? But it's, it's basically to do with the barrow. So the barrow may not be 100% accurate. And I think th there's an allowance, I think, of about 100, maybe 120 feet between them, right? Um, so that's why. So he can't actually give us 6,000, but he can give us three. Uh, and three, that's good for us because, well, there's no point giving me five. He's got to talk back, so give me three. And it, it just works. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. There's never a flight. Sure does not, Murph. I'm sure you'll agree with this. There's never a flight where you don't learn something. You know? Yeah, You're I've never had that learning. before. 
yeah. You're always learning something, so that's a, that's another one. Hmm. Hey, so we've uh, gone back over to local Q and H. We are approach mode armed. We've just dropped below six thousand. Descending now. Speed is looking good. We'll drop some flaps here now. Once we hit Turdu, that'll help with uh, getting our speed right back down. So we are only clear for the approach, we're not clear to land yet, so that's just to keep in the back of your mind. Yeah. Postman 2 892, clear direct to IFBAP for runway 10 left. Gosh, sorry, the plane is behaving beautifully. But you know, that's because it's, 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 it's got a good captain. You're back in the wheel. <laughs> You're doing alright, to be fair to you. That's as good as a compliment as you're gonna get. I'll take it, right. give okay, listen, <laughs> <laughs> it's framed, man. <laughs> you haven't totally messed up. <laughs> Not yet, there's, all, there's still time. I'll, now, uh, I'll let you. now, speaking of there's still time, what haven't I done? If anyone can notice, what haven't I done? Based on the last transmission from ATC, what haven't I done? Have a think about it. You know, when we're established, and then you can let them know, yeah? Sweet. Pull short off uh, Pluto, uh, Shamrock to turn the Julius. Stay firm, there's a marking on the ground called Pluto, don't proceed on beyond Pluto. Ah, uh, roger. Shannon Control, good afternoon, easy 318. There's a voice. There's a voice. Descending through 150. Easy 318 Yankee, hello, clear direct to IFBAP for runway 10 left, descend to flight level 100. Google's on the telly! Uh, confirm direct, please. EV318 Yankee. EV318 Yankee, clear direct to IF BAP for runway 10 left, descend to flight level 100. So, uh, the, the question was, what haven't I done, right? So our landing lights are on. Dougal, have you been drinking? <laughs> I have, Ted. I've been drinking like a mad idiot. Approach mode is armed. I haven't changed the barometric pressure. ATC said Q and H or local Q and H was nine or nine or zero hectopascals. I've left it on nine or nine or three. Now, there's a caveat to this because ATIS information is still giving us nine or nine or three, right? And Navigraph and Alma Weather Services are saying nine or nine or three. So if you're out by a slight point, it's not a big to do. However, if you're out by considerably more, well, expect either a stall or an extremely firm landing if you're going by. Uh, if you're not on a visual approach, if you're just going by your instruments, that can make a total mess of it. 0.3 of a hectopascal, a couple of hundred, well, not really, it's about 20 feet. But that's where I haven't fully done the thing with the oak with the thing. My bad. We are established, Gibbo. Okay, direct. Okay, right, uh, Flight level 100 for 10 zero left, easy 318 Yankee. What I meant to say was, it was a limitation, yeah. It was a limitation with your controls. I, I actually set it, uh, but uh, the, the software broke it. Software broke it. 2,500. Ryanair 970, Depot, Avalon, passing 4,600. Ryanair 970, Depot, identified, climb unrestricted to flight level 230. I don't know if I'm level 230, Ryanair 970, Depot. 2,000. Shannon Control, from the cargo 8353, ready to taxi 10, Ryan. Uh, Roger, Cargo 8353, taxi, whiskey 2 Sierra, hold short of runway 10, right? Whiskey 2 Sierra, hold short uh, of runway 10, right? Let's take Cargo 8353. Now, I left this little bit in, and it's important, because this is what can happen, right? Um, our report is, we are fully established, where we're established on the localizer, so we're, we're telling Control, hey, we're established. It can happen and don't let it knock your confidence. If for whatever reason you end up um, communicating, you're broadcasting while someone else is broadcasting, it can happen. They call it step, you're stepping on someone. But I left it, uh, now Gibbo did say Murph, but I left it there because 
I've done it so many times myself. When I'm flying, I've done it so many times. Don't let it knock you. You, you, you might hear the, the ping. You, you might hear something. Cool the jets. Keep listening. Wait for your gap. And then speak again. It can happen. It's going to happen. You can't avoid it. Um, no matter how punctual you're trying to be, it just can't be helped. Right? So don't let that knock you. Continue stand. Uh, continue taxi to stand four zero six. Samrock two Charlie Juliet. Sky. Uh, Firefly two three five cleared ILS approach runway zero six. Cleared ILS approach runway zero six. Firefly two three five. Postman two eight nine or two cleared direct to IFPAP. Now again, he only cleared us to the approach. We're not cleared to land just yet. Yeah. Two eight nine or two, clear direct to if that. Two thousand five hundred. There's a crosswind, Gibbo. Nineteen knots. Love it. Nine Charlie Kilo taxi Bravo one Bravo two hold short of runway three four. Give me grammar. Why is it always me? Stewart 8 x Taxi, Hotel 1, cross runway 34, Whiskey 1, Sierra, hold short of runway 10 right. Where's that other one, uh, cross 34? Flying sideways, Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> I've got this! <laughs> okay, hold short of runway 10 right at Sierra 6. Sierra 6, 8x. Okay. If things go terribly, Murphy, what's our get out of Dodge? Mr. Approach, 4000, turn left, and then make another attempt. Okay. So our missed approach just in here. It sure doesn't say just hand the controls over to Gibbo. <laughs> doesn't say that. Fire 6 Foxtrot, Tronic Patrol, identified, clear, direct to Agori. Direct to Agori, layer 6 Foxtrot. Same mark 6 to 8 hotel, ready for push and start, then 4 to 5. We'll probably get a late clearance. Camera 2, Charlie G, looks like someone spawned on your stand there, you can uh, park stand 407. Right there. Shamrock 628 Hotel, push inside approved, QNH 993. Push inside approved, great. Stop because he was so busy. And Sh Shannon's so quiet, he just clears the line. Yeah. If he forgets us, we'll call a three mile final. Clear to land runway 06, service in 090, 13 knots. Clear to land runway 06, Firefly 235. Asher, listen, he was only brilliant. There we go. Five miles out, gear down. Right. Flaps three, our set currently. Speed brakes up. You've got your medium auto brakes. <laughs> um, landing lights on. Looks like we're good. We're on the glide slope. Nice. Okay. The Pappy are happy. One thousand. <laughs> that should be on a t-shirt. <laughs> My airplane. Danger. Fifty, forty, 
30. 20. Retard. 10. 5. Touchdown! Nice one. Floaty Mac, float, float. Little bit, little bit. Reverse is out, <laughs> spoilers out. <laughs> oh, there's Good Diesel. Reverse is slowed, breaks in, fucks in. 60 knots. All right, Ren. 189. <laughs> it's funny because it shows 212 on my screen. Ah, listen, Sorry. fake news. Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> So you missed Alpha Murph, just saying. <laughs> One of these days it'll happen. <laughs> you vacated where? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, so expecting Charlie Delta 2 Delta 1. Probably standard choice, we'll see. Yeah. Let me know when you're happy we're clear. Wilco? Tis, uh, tis fairly windy, all right? Yeah, what was that, 19 that way? Fire, flight 235, taxi Delta 1, correction, taxi Delta 2, Delta 1, stand 25. Taxi Delta 2, Delta 1, stand 25, for power flight 235. Rider 978, further climate, unicom, see ya. All right, so, stand 25 is, ah, oh, easy, directly in front of Delta 1. Isn't that handy? And that pretty much concludes our shared flight. I mean, we taxi back down to the stand, we park it up, we shut down, um, and depending on if the controller is busy, you can say, hey, thanks very much for a great service, or, you know, you can jump off. But again, it's it, this is just, it, it's a great showcase to show you, you know, using something like your controls in a shared cockpit environment. Um, this flight, it went according to plan. There was a couple of nuances that we, we came across, right? It was a non-standard departure out of Dublin. Uh, coming into Shannon, it was fairly straightforward. Weather wasn't too bad. Bit of a bit of a crosswind on landing, um, and you know you you, you got to hand fly it, right? I mean that's that's what you try and do. But as I said, uh, the idea of tonight was yes, we'll do a bit of uh, revision, right? But it's to show you the advantages of being able to use your controls in a shared cockpit environment. It's, it makes such a difference if you want to learn the aircraft, if you want to learn how to navigate, or indeed if you want to focus on ATC, this bit of software is the one to do it on. It, it's, a, it, it's a total game changer, right? Um, and also I do know that we had ATC coverage tonight and I want to say a special thanks to uh, to the lads. Uh, we, had, uh, we had the Adams and we had Josh there as well. Um, when you see these lads going online, um, give it a shot, go flying and uh, use this video as uh, a way to, you know, ah, oh, yeah, that's what we need to do. Watch back over it. This whole uh, lesson, if you like, this is all going to be uh, posted to YouTube. It'll stay on YouTube. Have a look back and listen in because you heard a couple of different things we hope for the first time tonight. Um, and, and that could have been, you know, um, clearance via PDC. It could have been holding short uh, at Pluto right it could be taxi release points and also knowing when to ask or when to expect um altitude changes and they'll vary they're going to change from airport to airport but the idea here is well flying from dublin to shannon you now have something to base your next uh flight on next week lesson five we revert to our existing network uh, our own network because we get our xbox pilots in there and next week we'll see us departing Dublin, flying to Shannon. And we have ATC on the ground and tower in Dublin. And we'll have ATC in the tower and ground at Shannon. So we're basically going to be doing this flight again on our own network. And we'll, we'll have controllers staff up uh, the frequencies and use this as your option if you like. Um, Adam says, no worries. I'm going to post a quick message in Discord, just some feedback for the people that did fly. Nice, Adam. Thank you very much indeed. Um, 
as I said, like the idea here is we wanted to just finely tune, finely tune a couple of areas that you might struggle with or controllers might struggle with. But hopefully after watching this demonstration uh, with the revision that we've covered tonight, plus that ground school manual, I mean, that's there. That's that's there for you guys. It's there forevermore. Uh, and it lives here uh, on our website. All the information on this, it's available for you. It's all for free and um, have a read over it. If you want to practice this flight yourself during the week, be it online or offline, uh, go hell for letter on it. And uh, again, we can see that we have, uh, there's still ATC, I, I believe, uh, in Ireland there at the moment between Shannon and Dublin. If anyone feels now that they want to give it a bash, give it a bash. And uh, as I said, next week we revert to our own. And this is all building its way up to what we will have, hopefully. And if the lads from VATAIR are around, I'd love to have our own uh, community VATSIM event. Uh, where you know we want to fly from different airports and that gives us the opportunity to jump into discord and help people along as well Do you know and um, also another important uh, point to, to raise you don't have to fly airliners in your controls with a shared cockpit it doesn't have to be airliners it could be the tbm it could be the vision jet right it, it, ideally you need an aircraft that's going to be capable in and out of dublin dublin doesn't want to see anything very small right it's just because it's busy um, but certainly, you know, King Air, TBM, you'd be all right with those. And uh, you can use share controlled with those aircraft as well. Or in fact, if you just want to do, you know, Shannon to Cork, uh, give that a blast as well. So uh, hopefully it wasn't an information overload. A huge thanks to the VAT Air guys, uh, to Adams and to Josh. And I think Dara's online as well. Um, and also to the controller yesterday. Just it, they're really, really nice guys to be able to you know, fly online with and they do a great job. And of course to Gibbo for putting up with me yesterday. <laughs> right. But we had we had such a great experience flying that flight yesterday. We're itching to get going to do more shared flights. Uh like I even mentioned as said Gibbo like across the pond, like we we, we gotta give this a shot a shot, you know? Um, and I'd love to be able to see that during the week. I'll, I'll create all these new Discord channels if you guys want to try. Dip your toes into the shared cockpit environment. Um, iron out any issues that you might have. Buddy up. So pick someone on the course. Hey, you want to go flying? That's what it's all about. Uh, and if you can do that practicing when it comes to next week, then well, you might have the option. You might feel uh, next week, hey, do you know what? Uh, we're going to buddy up and we'll do next week's flight using your controls in a shared cockpit environment. It's a tremendous little add-on that's free that just makes life so much easier. You learn so much faster and it can be an incredible experience, do you know? So uh, lads, thank you also very, very much indeed for all your help tonight. For everyone tuning in, I do appreciate it. There was a lot of information to be covered there, but as I said, everything will be available here on YouTube. You can watch back, the course material is there. Everything that we've done tonight, everything's there. So uh, thank you also very, very much. We're back to you on Wednesday night uh, with the news. We're showing off the Azure Poly Bronco, uh, amongst other bits and bobs. Uh, and then uh, coming up on Friday, uh, where we have another group flight. And uh, I'm looking forward to that as well. So what are we doing on Friday? It's where I'd know what we were doing. Uh, right. So uh, any updates, by the way, it's, it's, it's if you can, lads, it's important if you jump onto Discord. This is where I post what we do on a weekly, uh, our weekly schedule. Right. Uh, can we see the Duke? Uh, I'm not sure yet, Angerloo. I will ask the question though. Um, I post a weekly schedule every week on our Discord. So exclamation point Discord. That'll give you an invite to our server. We've got a lot of awesome people over there. And uh, that's where I keep all the uh, all the notes, all the information. Uh, our Friday group flight uh, is going to be interesting because uh, I learned that BAE Systems were searching for innovative ways to uh, reconfigure over 100 of their 146s. And uh, one portfolio I found came from a crowd called Explorer One. Their concept was to uh, re-engineer the 146 to operate as a bush aircraft, flying in and out of airports with unprepared runways. So I said to myself, that seems like a challenge for Firefly Air. So that's what we're going to do on Friday. We're flying out of Alaska and into Canada uh, with some interesting airports uh, that will put the 146 really uh, on its limit. So it should be a bit of fun. So uh, yeah, do be sure you ramble over to there uh, on Friday. 1900 Zulu time. That's where it's all happening. All right. So uh, that's the story now. We'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching and good luck to you. For a warbird, it's one of the finest warbirds 
ever released in Microsoft Flight Simulator, considering you have the excellent work of Flying Iron. This thing, because of the extra features, because of the... Jesus, because of the optimization, 